we have Fee Quail with us tonight. He is on the line now. I'm going to try to bring him on. All right. It's like and, we have him on. And, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't think Steve needs an introduction, but uh, just for the sake of it, very briefly, because we've got a lot to get into tonight. Uh, folks, bookmark stevequail.com. That's S-T-E-V-E, quail, Q-U-A-Y-L-E.com. Use that every single day. Go to that site once a day at least. Check it to make sh- to, to, to see what's going on. He's got alerts. Uh, I have never seen so much activity uh, with respect to uh, 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 first-hand reports than than than, I, than Steve sent me here in the last 48 hours, and uh, that's all I'm going to say. With that, Steve, welcome to the program. Uh, good night, or good night, good evening, Doug. I guess I'm hey, might, getting married. Hey, by the way, Joe, I didn't know you were getting married, but congratulations. Oh, well, thank you. And yeah. I'm glad that we're on tonight. Uh, I think, Doug, we should tell people. I was scheduled to be on yesterday, but you got an overwhelming uh, sense in your spirit, and me too, unrelated to each other, and we contacted each other early this morning. And we've got to, go, we have to go on tonight to tell people. The title of tonight's show is uh, basically World War Three. And uh, it's no more. There's no more time for denial. Now, when I say World War III, I'm not just talking a shooting war between Russia, China, NATO, and everything. Everything in this country has changed almost seemingly overnight. There is a corollary that relates to the fires that are taking place in Colorado. We have them in Montana now. They have them in New Mexico. There is a corollary between all of the reports even carried on the national news about Russian overflights of Canada. Uh, There was a time when fighter jets would have been scrambled. Now the Russians have been given permission to overfly Canada in its entirety, mapping and making sure, Doug, the Canadians have uh, basically kept up their part of the bargain. I wish I could be as blunt as I need to be tonight. By the grace of God, I will temper my my information with his grace tonight it's obvious to people that everything has changed we've seen the meltdown of one of the french large banks on i think thursday uh society general we've seen the infamous uh denialist saying everything's fine because after all the only thing that matters is a stock market yet those people don't realize that the stock market is only kept up by high frequency trading and it's actually a picture painted to deceive the masses. I want to start tonight by just laying out a little groundwork because, again, most people, if you talk to most evangelical Christians, they do not understand that the last days, the word that the Apostle Paul used was perilous. And perilous is absolutely one of the most uh, delightful words in the English language, though the ramifications of using it are so delightful, because perilous relates to your own personal safety and your family's safety. When your life is in peril, it's in danger. Our country is no longer what it was. The republic is dead. The Constitution is abrogated. We have executive order, which is ruled by fascist decree. We have a situation where the man of lawlessness has always already been revealed in one sense. I don't mean the Antichrist, who will be the ultimate man, but the spirit of lawlessness reigns through the land. The law basically is what they say it is, having no relationship, and the they being the Luciferians, those, and I'm not talking about the local police or the highway patrol or the people that really take their oath serious to protect and serve. But now we have a country that's been financially plundered, and I can make the, I could talk until I'm blue in the face about derivatives and LIBOR and how the interagency bank rates on credit default, uh, credit default swaps and and uh, interest rate swaps and everything, how that all works, let's just say this. There is no money. So every time someone puts a uh, check in the bank, there's a computer entry. Every time you put cash, there's a computer entry. And now we've got a total situation of unmatched historic events taking place. I just want to run through a couple of them to give people a heads up. I have been warning, and nobody warned longer or harder on the whole Cumbra Vieja, the Canary Islands and the Azores, and the Mid-Atlantic Trench in Iceland, and the multiple volcanoes going off longer than I have. And now we've got cluster quakes going off in the Baja. We've got absolute strange anomalies all over the country in people's water wells. We have now a situation where I think all the, the, the areas without power, I just totaled up quickly, 
five million people. And isn't it interesting that the Supreme Court must have been clued in because they were all due to leave Washington on the, uh, you know, basically the next train out. I mean, obviously some of them flew. So now we're in a position, you guys, where all of these events are coming into focus. I gave a word, and I believe, and you judge everything. I tell people, you know, I get blamed for a lot of stuff, but one thing I've always told people, if they know the Lord Jesus Christ, take it to the Lord in prayer. We're now in the, in the, the realm, the time period, where your only safety is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your retirement, kiss it goodbye. It doesn't exist. Your IRAs, KEOs, 401Ks, give it a few more months, and then when the uh, realization comes that they're not there. You know, I'm called a fear monger. I'm called everything, Dr. Doom, blah, 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 blah. But, it, it, you know, the truth is, is, a, is an amazing thing because nothing flushes out darkness faster than truth. And I think you know that, Doug, and I know, Joe, you're seeing that in real time. You know, Steve, let me ask you a question here. Um, it, look, the Supreme Court, uh, it, it, and I know that this is kind of an off, uh, kind of a left field question, but the Supreme Court ruled on this, basically um, ceded our country over to socialism with the ruling. That's my opinion, and I think that that opinion is consistent with the professional uh, legal scholars. However, um, well, th with that said. Um, and, and then they flee. They, 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 you know, they, they leave Washington, obviously, you know, uh, on their vacations or whatever. What, is this connected? Is this is this decision to socialize this country or to, to, to turn it over to the socialists, if you will, um, connected in any way, shape, or form to what we're seeing in natural disasters, wildfires, power outages, all of this? You know, uh, for example, you know how when we rule against Israel on uh, or Jerusalem or attempt to divide Jerusalem. Genesis 12.3 comes into play. Uh, is this have anything to do with this, or am, am I just off? Well, can I say something? It's all part of the surface of a basketball. If you take the writing on a basketball, all the writing appears in order, but it covers the whole basketball or a baseball. You know, I mean, basketballs usually have more writing, but absolutely, yes, in my opinion. Now let me take each one of those, Doug, because I think what people have got to understand, you're, I've got to change your wordage. We're not a socialist country. We are a flat-ass fascists headed towards total communism, okay? Now, again, most people don't even know how to define fascism. They certainly don't know how to define communism, but one of the main defectors, the highest ranking defector in Russia's history is he made a statement. It was an article on World Net Daily. Americans don't even understand what Marxism is. Of course not. The National Education Society and all, our edu National Education uh, Association and all of the, quote, intellectual uh, societies, what have we had? We have had nothing but the destruction of E, uh, of, of reading, writing, and arithmetic in this country. We have had a group of children that grew up that knew not God. We have had a group of children that don't know what the heritage of their country is. So by the great divorce, divorcing people from their roots, you then can substitute an imaginary world. And we've talked about that on your show, virtual world. But let's talk about even the situation with Israel. Zechariah 12 is in total play. God is absolutely clear that uh, whether people like it, it doesn't matter if the Muslims like it, it doesn't matter if the Buddhists like it, it doesn't matter if the uh, Aryan Nations people don't like it, it doesn't matter. God said Jerusalem will be the throne of David, and Jesus Christ, when he comes back at his second return, will sit upon the throne of David. And God said he will absolutely destroy the nations that come up against Jerusalem. Look, Syria is a stone's throw away from Israel. And the point that I think people have got to understand, I'm not talking about the modern state and the boundaries, because most people be flabbergasted and know the land deed that God gave, and it certainly uh, threatened Syria, it would threaten Lebanon, it would threaten parts of Saudi Arabia. In other words, they hold a title deed signed by the living God. So when I hear all this nonsense, well, the Palestinians, this Palestinians, that, the Palestinians are the Philistines, and all you've got to understand is the Philistines, and, and look, I am against the uh, 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 destruction of men, women, and children who are innocent. We're going to talk about that in the show tonight, because we are a blood-guilty nation, Doug. And Indeed. most people don't understand that innocent blood cries out to a holy God. And this is what I'm telling. I have to tell what I'm saying tonight. I am compelled to tell it. The, you know, gone are the arguments. Gone are the chat rooms. When I say they'll, they'll still exist, they'll exist as the bombs are going off until the Internet's down. And then those who have sought their identity amongst those who can only destroy, tear down, slander, mock, 
They'll be left to themselves, a fate worse than death, because there will be no one to call on. Literally, the phones won't work. There'll be no one to email. Literally, the computers won't work. And they'll be left with that gnawing feeling. Guess what they get to eat at that point? They get to eat the fruit of their own lip. And unfortunately, because those lips weren't used in repentance and calling upon the name of the Lord while he may be found, this is about Jesus tonight. We have scoffed, we have mocked, we have allowed as a Christian nation, quote-unquote, and I categorically challenge that. There's nothing Christian. We, we are in what Francis Schaeffer and others have called a post-Christian uh, uh, mindset. you got people still bringing in the sheaves, and they don't understand they're about ready to be rounded up and burnt, literally at the stake in some parts of this country. So I want to, I wanna, may I just give a quick introduction to what we're going to talk about tonight? Please, yeah, please do, Steve. Okay, because again, you guys, there's a lot to cover, and I am absolutely, when I say this, I feel like uh, uh, there's fire shut up in my bones, and I know a lot of people wish that my mouth would shut up, but I cannot open my mouth except to proclaim that which the Lord has stated. And look, challenge, take it to the Lord in prayer. And for all those people out there that just want to listen to what I have to say to mock, go ahead and mock, because your day has come. Your day is not coming. Your day is here. We slaughtered the newborns and the ritualistic, sac- I wrote this, the sacrifice of pro-choice, and the church said and did nothing. We bombed innocent men and women worldwide and called it collateral damage. The church said and did nothing. We allowed all our manufacturing to be shipped on foreign soil, and the church said, uh, to be shipped to foreign soil, and the church said and did nothing. We allowed Wall Street to rape, pillage, plunder uh, the present and the future capital of an entire nation. The church said and did nothing. We allowed the most evil Luciferian to inoculate our children and destroy our elderly. We did and said nothing. We we allowed our entire education system to be taken over by Marxists and communists and wonder where our future leaders are. We allowed our borders to be overrun. Listen to this. And our culture to be destroyed and our language to be bastardized. We did nothing. We said nothing. We allow the mainstream media to lie continuously and incessantly and still turn it on to get the nightly news. We we need our nightly dose of vomit. We allow the God of heaven and Jesus Christ, our Savior, the foundation stone of all liberty and justice, to be mocked and ridiculed and to be held in contempt by those who openly worship their idols and their devils. We allow our food, our air, our water to be poisoned and continue uh, to pay for our execution by buying the products that they're producing to kill us. We allow the most evil men and women to hold the highest offices of the land, voting them in year after year, and we do nothing but reelect the same traitors year after year, expecting a different result with the same people. We allowed by our indifference, our apathy, and pursuit of pleasures to make us biological response automatons, in other words, robots, and shake our heads when it all goes to hell. Our cities are rotting corpses. Our values no longer exist. Our borders are pillaged. Foreign armies are positioned already to begin to rise, kill, and destroy. Our forests are on fire. Our children are forced into a sexual cauldron of uh, demented perverts, and we call it enlightenment. Every border, boundary, and, and, and uh, barrier that God has placed between mankind and the most wicked of fallen angels and their demon spawn spirits has been breached. Our foundations are destroyed, yet even the limp-wristed professing believers say and do nothing. Our end has come, and we clap and cheer at our own destruction, and soon we'll be taken into captivity. World War III is here in all dimensions. Now, that's my introduction. Uh, (laughs) If that's your introduction, I can't wait until we uh, uh, get into the meat. You know, it's... Uh, uh, Steve, you know, that's right on the money. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, that summarizes the the attacks that we are under uh, currently by what, by our own governments. And I mean, that was perfectly said. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. And uh, dead on the money. And I think you you hit everything. So, I don't think you missed anything. Steve, let, let me ask you this before we get really rolling here. Remember, or did you see that woman in uh, suburban Rochester, New York? This has been on my heart a lot. I don't know why, but I've got to tell you this. The the, the older woman that bus monitor outside of Greece, New York, or in Greece, New York, who uh, was taunted, harassed, and he poked by the, uh, four, uh, by the four teenagers. Have you seen that video at all? 
or no, I haven't. That? I just saw the, the is, if, if, is it's the one that Dredge is referring to where the kids were, what, uh, uh, banned from school for a year or whatever? Exactly. Anyway, the six year, this young person, one of the tormentors, uh, had taken YouTube or taken video from the cell phone. Uh, for, in a nutshell, four uh, middle uh, school students, like 13, 14 years old, uh, just making fun of this elderly woman, a 68 years old. She overweight, uh, but but uh, they were poking her, prodding her. They pulled pulled on her hair. Uh, they, they were just harassing the heck out of her. Okay, and and she uh, ended up. She was crying, of course. But but you know what I found? What was on my heart when I when I saw this was obviously the outrage, and of course the, the all of America was outraged because. Uh, they, they did send her money, and, and, and she's she's now it's all she's a whole different ballgame. She can retire; she doesn't have to put up with this anymore. But what I saw on that bus, and what I saw in that video, Steve, um, that we we as a country have become that woman, where there was no fighting back, there was no resistance, it was nothing but tears. And you know, I don't blame her for not fighting back because she probably could not have uh, overtaken her assailants. But what really gets me is there was nobody there to help her. The bus driver didn't stop. The the kid the, the kids of less immorality did not step in. No one stepped in to stop these four thugs from uh, from messing with. It could have been your mother, my mother, my aunt, your aunt, you know, whatever. But no one stopped it. And the tears flowed, and now you know. Now we're rending our garments after the fact, saying, "Oh, this poor, this poor person." Well, you know, it, it didn't have to get there to begin with, and it didn't have to. Uh, it, it, you know, it would have been a whole different ball game two, ge- three generations ago. We've become a, a, a country of, of cowards, in my estimation. Well, I, I would say this: we have become a uh, a country of, of of, and I'm saying this, and I mean this true, chemi- chemically castrated, emasculated men who have been sexualized by the spirit of uh, what I would call the spirit of Lilith. Until people understand what Lilith is, that was the night hag. That's actually what's being referred to in the terror that comes by night in the 91st Psalm. Look it up, Lilith. I don't want to go into all that stuff. Right, right. And what I try and do, Doug, and here's the thing, okay? I am so pleading with the Lord tonight. I just called Romy, and Romy and I prayed for everyone because this, as you know, the numbers on this uh, broadcast years have gone uh, ballistic. That's an understatement, but they're from every corner of the world. And that can only be God. That's not because of anything I'm doing or you're doing. But the message is his. The, the, if you will, someone said, describe what you're doing now. I said, I'm voicing the pleadings of a holy God to all who have ears to return. Come unto me, Jesus speaking, all ye that are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You cannot stop it. Every day I get emails. Well, don't you think if we do Second Chronicles 7.14, I know when they quote that to me in the attitude they quote it to me, <laughs> they've never done it or practiced it personally anyway. I, I told people, when I got saved in 1972, Jimmy and Carl Webb had an if my people movement across the country. If his people would have moved then, we wouldn't be having this broadcast now. But unfortunately, the seduction Paul and and Jesus talked about just what it would be like that even the elect would be deceived if the days weren't shortened. So when people tell me the days are speeding up, I mean, I'm 61. Uh, I act as sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm told by those close to me to act my age. And I said, well, at some point, you give me a hard time for acting like a teenager, and then I come to the point of 61, and I said, I've lived three times the speed of life, so I'm 183 years old by experience. And I said, so I think it's time for me to go back and act a little bit younger. And I'm only saying that because it's, it's not meant to be funny. It's meant to just illustrate a point. Most of us right now are looking at life. If we're in our 60s, 70s, the majority of our life has gone outside of God extending our lives, as most of us have a, 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 have a destination with eternity. And it's interesting. I called David Langford tonight, Doug and Joe, and I said, David, what is the Lord speaking to your heart? And the Lord, he, David said, the Holy Spirit fell on him as in deep intercession. Until anybody's prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, don't give me any religious snobbery or that religious spirit, because that man knows what to do. And the Lord, he said, the Spirit of God came on him, and he was just pleading with God to grab a little more time, Lord, for those to come in. And, and the message that David was given is the time for people to respond is 
ever so short. Now listen to this. Henry Gruber, who's coming to Bozeman, Montana, will be here in Bozeman on, on uh, Saturday at 7 o'clock in the evening at the Holiday Inn, unless the location changes on my website, but 7 o'clock. Henry's word from the Lord was, tell my people. And this, this was given to him the end of April, so we're only getting the last month. But May, June, and July will be the transitional months where people's eternal destinations, and he was specifically talking to Henry about the Christians, God said, I will no longer tolerate a lukewarmness in my body. And, and that doesn't mean there's no one going to be saved. I want to clarify what he's saying. But that the body of those who profess to know Jesus, they're being asked, whose side are you on? And I can tell you this, Doug, based on what I'm seeing in the suicides, I'm asking, I've been praying this week with people on the phone who are Christians who are desperate to hold on to life, okay? There's something wrong, my brothers, hey, Doug and Joe. I've been praying for people that are so despairing, they're so down, they're broken. And I tell them, and, and God's been faithful to answer them, I've got friends, and, 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 and when I say friends, there are people I know all over the world through your broadcast and other broadcasts that are as close a friend to me as anybody I've known for 20 years because they're honest with Jesus, and I get the blessing to pray for them. And they, in turn, pray for you, Doug. They pray for you, Joe. They pray for us. Doug, I've sent you those emails so you know it's true. These people are praying. And even when they tried to kick you off the server and all that stuff, by the grace of God, you move supernaturally, and God moved quickly to get you up again because, you know, it looked pretty dire there for the first 24, did it not? <laughs> it sure did. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, it, it did. And, um, you know, they, we're, we're up against some formidable spiritual foes, and, and people don't understand that. You know, there's a human element that that's actually uh, – uh, doing the, the the bidding, the work of the the uh, demonic aspect of this, and, and I could tell it's demonic because, uh, I mean, uh, to me it's demonic is, is seeing what I see, and some of the most vicious. Well, yeah, look, I've wow, seen hate. I've seen the emails. You've seen the emails, and I'll tell you point blank, it's demonic. First of all, if someone claims to be a Christian and they distance themselves from you because uh, they knew where it was headed, and we both knew who I'm talking about, or sure. consider me, you know, uh, whatever, the son of darkness, and then if he's a Christian, he needs to come to me, and he needs to come to you. But so, you know, people, let me ask you this. If someone's warning you and warning you and warning you, and everything we've warned you about is now here, and I said it, and I said it for so many years, and it's not enough to say I said it. That's not the point. Now we've got people who are flipping out, snapping. And, and Doug, I, I was mocked because I broke down over the woman that called you. Was that last Sunday or whenever? Whose son was set up by a crooked general and murdered in the military? And I talked to her today, and she's, she's listening, I believe, uh, tonight. So, right. yes, yes. And, and I want to say something to those callous, uh, inhumane creatures of darkness that would that didn't understand why it broke down because the, the, the enabled to have empathy okay i can tell you stories about talking to parents and i won't go into the gory details of how their their children were murdered in afghanistan and the military tells them one thing and they get the autopsy reports and it's so gruesome that i won't define it but for a while my heart broke for that woman and it broke and i, I can't help it Look, I'm not ashamed to weep. Jeremiah wept almost the entire part of his life. And what I'm trying to do is hold back the tears because years ago, and those who have been listening to me on talk radio, I said, and the Lord told me this, and I, I don't even identify with anybody except the guy that said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and that's who I am, okay? I, I, I wish I wasn't. One guy got offended because I was too abrasive. There are so many people that are wearing diapers that they don't need to have us change their diapers. They need to learn how to be potty trained in the things of the living God and grow up, stand up, and act up for Jesus. I'm talking acting up in a righteous and holy faith walk, telling the powers of hell, be gone in Jesus' name. So I just want to set something straight, and I, I pray for that, that, that nothing touched me more than that woman because I know, I know that I know that I know because of the grace of God what she was going through. It wasn't something that was, oh, just Steve trying to work up empathy. But in the name of Jesus, every demon, every devil, the Lord God of heaven rebuke you. And I'm praying, Doug, every time that we, you and I get together that the Lord God himself would seal their lips. Because as he seals their lips, he also seals their fate. 
And I can tell you point blank, as someone who's been to hell, seen hell, not even even my worst enemies. So I say this, if those people want to go to hell, go to hell quickly, but don't take anybody else with you. And to my sister, God bless you, because I've been praying like, I, 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 you know, listen, I'm, I, I'm believing God for miracles for people. Where are all these devils when, you know, do they go on talk radio and pray for the people that are ready to blow their brains out? Do they help the widows and orphans? Do they do any of this? No. But somehow, and Romy, God bless you, you know how she feels the same way I do. They got this religious spirit. Oh, trust God. If you really trusted God, you wouldn't be telling to buy food. I said, boy, lady or sir, if, if Noah had your attitude, there'd be no human race. If Joseph had your attitude, there'd be no promise of a Savior. If Jesus had the attitude of the people that claimed to follow him, just trust him. He did trust God, and the angels sent Jesus, Joseph, and Mary into Egypt with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So, you know, the bottom line is, you know why Doug people are religious? Because they don't have a relationship anymore. They do not have a relationship. They won't even, they won't even uh, uh, bring something so uh, dire as their kids going to hell to the Lord and cry out to God. David Wilkerson asked the question, where are the all-night all prayer meetings? My entire walk with Jesus was birthed in the Spirit of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't care if Baptists don't believe it. What we started by the great of God that in our response as quote-unquote hippies and, and uh, outcasts in the late 60s and early 70s, those are the people that are still standing strong for Jesus. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but when you're touched by the Spirit of the living God, when Jesus becomes Lord and Savior, when you realize the great price he paid and how much he loves us, I can understand why, why the book of Hebrews talks about those who neglect so great a gift of salvation. I've watched Illuminati ceremonies. Uh, uh, when they die, and when they're all dressed in black and they have all of their occult symbols and stuff. But you know one thing you never see on an illuminous face when they have their own funerals? You never see a smile. You never see joy. You never see hope. And, and there's one on the YouTube. It shows Angela Merkel and a bunch of the Germans, you know, as somebody who passed away. They're all dressed in black robes. It looks like they're, you know, and, and I'm just saying this. You know why? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there can be joy. And what we need more than anything in this life is that refreshing that comes from the presence of Jesus Christ. We don't need any more Bravo Sierra. We don't need any more manure. We don't need any more limp-wristed Christian men. Even Gerald Salente, he didn't call him out as, as Christian men, but he just said, where are all the men? That's, That's right. I've been crying for that for 20 years. Where are they? Because you and I both know, Doug, that if, if we had to name many of them, we'd probably be limited to, to, to two hands on our fingers, and I doubt we could have in toes. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and one thing, Sue, before we go too far, I want to tell you something. And I, 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 didn't, uh, I just learned this, well, that, that and I don't mean to go back to this, but I've got to go back to this Gold Star Mom. Uh, she gave me all of uh, her dead son's uh, notes from the army. Okay, now some of these she had, that he gave her before it went to the military. Okay, so some of this the military never saw. We when we talked today, I t we, her and I talked about you and and, and about uh, what happened uh, that day that he was executed in uh, in Ganjal. Uh, it was it's called the Ganjal uh, ambush, and of course somebody got a, a medal of honor. From that, and, and I'm not going to mention names, but it's easy to find out, folks. But, but here's the deal. In his books, in his writings, he identifies the general that sent him on this mission. And I, as I, and I mean this, and I almost fell out of my chair when I saw this, as being part of the Illuminati. And, and she said, did you see his reference to the Illuminati. I said, yes. Did you, you know, I mean, did you write that? I mean, I, I, I didn't understand where this came from. He, he had stumbled on something so sinister, so bad. They tried to kill him the day before, missed, uh, and, and they finally got him the next day. And uh, But I, I just want to say that to the people listening out there, you think that the Illuminati or, or whatever is, is, you think what Steve's talking about is all is fake, fairy tale? No, man. It's true, and it's in our military right now, and it's going on. And I just wanted to bring that out to the surface, but I didn't mean to derail your thoughts, Steve. No, I got a, oh, you I got a Doug, question. You, you, you added to them. Go ahead, Joe. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, um, 
getting back to what we, you were just talking about, uh, somebody in the chat room asked, when will the Christians start fighting back, or will they uh, be like sheep for the slaughter? In the coming, you know, uh, periods when you know there will be persecutions happening, uh, and they will be coming after the citizens and especially the Christians. Well, the first of all is is that the Christians need to learn. First of all, let's say this: the reason the Christians are not equipped, and they're not Joe and Doug, to deal with spiritual warfare, and the Bible teaches explicitly that the things that we see on earth are controlled by the unseen forces, the principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, and heavenly places. When you go to the Ephesians and you see that God gave some to be pastors, evangelists, prophets, teachers, that word for the perfecting and the equipping of the saints, what the devil has done has produced a bunch of wimplings in the puke pits, okay? I won't even call them pulpits anymore. And you know what puke produces? When someone throws up, you know what it does? It produces a gag reflex in everybody else, right? Have you ever been on a boat with people tossing their cookies? I'm sorry. If that's, quote, abrasive, so be it. Maybe you have to get beneath your hardened heart and realize that God has given you a ticking heart. So the question I have, I ask that all the time. Let God arise as enemies be scattered. I don't believe in pacifism, nor do I believe in, uh, you know, going out and taking on an A-10 with a 223. But I think the time has come, you guys, for us to basically make war in the spirit. Now, what I will do is define that. War in the spirit is praying. It's interceding. It is fasting, and it's doing what God tells you to do next. Unfortunately, most Christians still hope, and I'm sorry, but they do, that somehow this thing is going to turn around. It's not going to turn around. You're going to go through very dark days. Now, listen to this. I said that a couple days ago. The headline on Drudge right now, I'm on a, you know, I have a big monitor. Uh, By the way, I have to replace two computers totally from our last show, Doug. (laughs) DC to be dark for days, okay? Dark days. I even had Holly uh, give me a screenshot of uh, uh, one of the headlines is the end of days. It was on Drudge. It was on a, and then they changed it, okay? And, and what was fascinating to me is I believe God is so signaling through everything. You don't want me? Fine. And I believe, and I'll stand this because I believe the Lord has told me to say this. When everybody was saying that the United States, we can just get the right man in office. We just get the right political party. Of course, they voted George Luciferian Bush in. Okay, and guess who gave us 9-11? All of his pals. And then we've had them from day one, ever since Eisenhower forward. So you can't look for a political solution. Everybody wants Barabbas, but they don't want Jesus, okay? And so the point is, is when God's spirit is rejected, when the spirit of God, and he, and I'm not saying he's lifted his hand off the world, or anything. I'm just saying, when this nation said, we don't want you, God is a gentleman, he said, fine. And the Lord has withdrawn his presence, and now we've got the situation going. Uh, you know, can I say something? One of my farmer friends, and we're going to get into this, tonight I pray by the grace of God that if there's a potential for everyone to hear deep in their spirit the truth of what I'm saying, I pray that those who know the truth, that are hearing the truth, will act upon the truth. There is nobody listening to my voice except those who have said goodbye to Jesus forever and are worshiping Lucifer. Even they can come back if they haven't blasphemed the Holy Ghost. But here's, I want to read this to you. This is from uh, my friend Todd. Steve, I'm a non-GMO farmer in southern Indiana, and we are a week or two from the total loss or at least 50% reduction in the corn crop. It was 104 yesterday and no rain in sight. By the way, that was the same day uh, Kansas hit 118. The popcorn is in the pollination stage and is very stressed. If corn doesn't pollinate, it's a total loss no matter what happens the rest of the year. The field corn is better shaped but is still in desperate need of rain. The I-69 interstate is being built from Evansville to Indianapolis and almost finished to and from Evansville to the, to the Crane Naval's base. It's getting very serious, and I don't believe in coincidences. I have a source that told me there has not been a rain out of the day, on the one rain out of any day on the I-69 job since March. Can you say weather wars or judgment day? I would say both. 
This is a very serious uh, situation. He said, tell the flock to get their food ASAP. Now, when I tell people I know some of the biggest grain traders in the world, that's not boasting. Okay, I want to share something. When I agreed to be a watchman 20 years ago, God said if I would be faithful to warn his people. This is a God thing. You get mad at me, get mad at him. Or ask him, did you really call Steve to do this? He said he would bring the people to that no to tell me what's going on if I would be faithful to warn his people. I have done that. I believe that there is not one person's blood on my hands, okay? And yet I stay on. Even, even and Doug, I, I, I'm not kidding you. I, obedience is better than sacrifice. I know that. So I'd rather obey than disobey. <laughs> but I go, how long, oh, Lord, how long? The people haven't got it. But a general once told me, sooner or later they'll get it. Unfortunately, it'll be too late for too many of them. So what I'm doing tonight is trying to give everything in as realistic time fashion. Fifteen years ago on talk radio, uh, yeah, about 15 years ago, maybe 12 to 15, I was talking about harmonic tremors and how they were indicative of a big, big volcanoes getting ready to explode. A guy named Bernard Chouet, go look it up, C-H-O-U-E-T, U.S. Geological Survey, was the first guy to really put down and to tell everybody that Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines was going to go off. Well... He based it on harmonic tremors. Now we have the Cumbra Vieja area. It's not just the Canaries and the Azores. It's the whole Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and we've got Iceland's two famous volcanoes. I can pronounce Katla, and then the other one I just called the E-volcano, ready to go off. We've got the situation where the Baja tonight, the Baja Peninsula, is starting to have harmonic tremors. And what a fancy way to understand, or an easy way to understand harmonic tremors is, is that they, they hit a frequency and stay at that frequency, which then causes the I'm making this super simple that causes the plates to shift so while we have this indefinite uh, uh, time period indefinite meaning I can't say it's two weeks four weeks I don't know but the bottom line is everything is heating up now let me share this that people need to understand Literally. prior to the prior to the weather that took place okay in the Midwest what do you make of this Doug as reported, eyewitnesses observed beside all the usual a Chinese small jet passenger plane of the Gulfstream size, like a corporate jet, followed by a military cargo jet aircraft. Odd and not usual. Those sta- the storms quickly followed the presence of those airplanes. Uh, look, I defer that to you. I, I don't know what to make of that. What well, I, I'll tell you what it is. I'm just trying to tell you people. It's weather modification. So oh. before anybody gives me that, that snot nose, uh, Fed payroll denial stuff, just oh. go look up weather warfare in a Google search, okay? Look up uh, uh, the Air Force We Own the Weather 2025 report. Unfortunately, they owned it for the last 20 years. It's not 2025. You always put off into the future what you possess today. You follow Maybe. me? Yeah. yeah. You always do that. So tech- Go ahead. No, I was just say, just go look up uh, one of the Obama czars, John Holdren, and his uh, weather modification uh, chemtrail uh, geoengineering plan that he admits to, and uh, you know they say they're doing it, and they've been doing it. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, yeah. So it's it, it's not it's really not even Steve to, to me weather modification is not even uh, it, it, it's a certainty it's it's proven the documentation is there. So okay, yep. but why 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 are we? I mean, look. It's I mean, the, this is the, it's a depopulation agenda. And I want to go back to something you said earlier, Steve, about the very elect being deceived. The, the days were not cut short. Even the very elect would be deceived. I've been talking to my dad, and I've had it on my mind. Uh, you know, the great deception uh, is that coming. Are we already in it with the the modern TV, um, music, entertainment, Hollywood system that we're in? Uh, or is is there? A, I mean, there will be a greater deception when the Antichrist comes on the scene. But are, is this currently? I mean, we are in the Great Deception. Do you think the beginning? Well, yeah, of I would it? say this: the two words that will define this this period of time is deception and seduction. Now, if I say the word seduce to you, Joe, what does that mean? Uh, it means to entice me by temptation uh, to do something okay. I wouldn't do, normally do. Right, and that's the correct word. Seduction usually promises you something that the end result is billed out as one thing but ends up being another, okay? 
It's like it's like uh, you know in the Bible. That's the reason why Proverbs has so much to say about a familiar a uh, woman who's a uh, you know a strange woman. In other words, a prostitute. You know, friendship sellers, as Calvin Miller called them in his book, The Singer. The point being is is that we're we're at, at a time period now where deception to deceive. Look, you can have 99% truth, and it's 1% error that damns you to eternity and see and through eternity. And the thing that's uh, the great deception, okay, the Bible says, and this is one thing that people have got to understand, God makes it clear that if you choose to believe the lie, then you're given over to believe that lie, and there's no coming back. It's like God said his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He didn't say the pagans. He didn't name anybody. He didn't say the Buddhist, Muslim. He said his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not because it hasn't been presented to them, but because they reject it, okay? And mm. Jesus said it this way. I love the way Jesus says it. I'm saying, Lord, help me to speak more like Jesus, because he made it simple and doesn't need long descriptions. Which of, your, which of the prophets did your fathers not kill? It's amazing. I still have people that are, are, are quoting Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, uh, you name it, uh, Jeremiah, and uh, Daniel, and, and yet they still want to reject that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I had one guy tell me, I had one guy tell me, well, we're not even allowed to say the name of Jesus. You know why? Because there's no other name under heaven by which a man can be saved that at the name of Jesus. Then I get the people that want to tell me that's not his real name. And then I get the prophetesses who are Jezebel on steroids, uh, prophesying uh, uh, out of their own spirit stuff they could have been reading on the Internet. And I say to them, where were you, Jezebel? 15 years ago with your prophecies. Where were you? And see, this is the problem. The spirit of Jezebel dominates the church. The spirit of Jezebel. And what is it? The spirit of harlotry. A woman rides a beast. And I'm not going into the prophetic implications of, of what's going on. Look at what we see in the Catholic Church. We've got the Catholic Church in total turmoil. We've got the appearance very soon of Petrus Romanus. We've got the... And, and that... I've heard uh, Protestants say, well, I don't care about that. I say you should, because you don't understand the ramifications of the time we're living in. You know, very soon, you guys, the voice of the critic will be silenced. Very soon, even our voices will be silenced, because Jesus said, the night comes when no man can work. And isn't it funny that all of our, all of our metaphors and all of our perceptions and all of our descriptions even the mainstream press that's done their best to destroy Jesus, best to mock him, best to, to allow the, the, the uh, uh, perverts to mock in every way, shape, and form. You know who a hero is in my book? It was a woman that was a truck driver. I think she's from Montana that went into, was it Boulder, Colorado, and smashed that disgusting uh, 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 portrayal of Jesus. Remember that in the museum? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I don't know if, if anybody knows her name. Would you email me, oh, and if man. you know her personally? I personally, someday, if, if I get the chance, I would buy her a dinner. I would, I would thank her and say, God bless you, my sister, that you had righteous indignation. You see, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, we're, 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 we're like, I, I, and I, I fought with the Lord, not fought with him, but I fought with my own heart and my thoughts over why we are all sheep uh, like we're led to the slaughter, okay? You know why the case is? Because the sheep that are smart follow the shepherd. The sheep that are stupid avoid the shepherd and are slaughtered. Doesn't that make sense? Because it's a good shepherd that isn't going to lead his sheep to the slaughter. But if you're a sheep and you're not following the good shepherd, guess what? There are wolves out in the woods, you know? Yes, yeah. yeah. and that's what Jesus said uh, it, from the Bible and in, in one of his sermons. And uh, he says that, you know, my people will be led uh, by the good shepherd, you know, uh, the Father. Exactly. Uh, Steve, look, w w what we're seeing right now is, to me, is unprecedented with, with regard to the natural disasters, the man-made uh, disasters, the uh, everything that's, that's taking place. Yeah, we have a volcano that erupted in Colombia. Last time it erupted, it killed close to twenty-three, twenty-five thousand people. Um, 
but, the but, sun is, is is a little uh, on the upside. With well, solar NASA's solar. cut all the feeds on all the solar satellites. Why would NASA cut it? It's never been done before. Guess what, guys? It's rock and roll time, and God is yet going to shake the heavens and the earth. He's going to shake it in his fury. Hey, the best way about I can tell everybody this is that all of the guys with their PhDs, and I'm impressed with PhDs. I'm also impressed with the thermometer because it has more degrees than some of the people <laughs> claim to be so smart that deny Jesus, okay? And I'm, I, I'm telling you this, you guys. Listen, it's war, okay? And, and I mean this. In the, when it comes to the realm of the spirit and the battle going on in the heavens, they, the devils and the demons and the fallen angels, will show you no quarter. But Jesus said, if you will put your faith in him, he gives you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And everything that shows up in the book of Revelation, God has already answered if we will but stand our ground in what Jesus has done. Jesus gave us a victory. We have to appropriate it by our stance. In other words, it's like this. If God says, Steve, take the sword, and I say, but I hate swords, you know? If right. I want to basically, again, and the Lord says, Steve, take the sword. Unfortunately, I like swords, okay? But I will take up my sword. The same thing if he says, take up your cross and follow me. What was the cross? The cross was God's declaration that there is a solution to man's sin. There is hope for a, a, a better, a better late, excuse me, for a future with Jesus. And it showed that once and for all, Satan, hell, death and the grave were defeated. It is that the Christians know of no triumph in their personal life of the reality of the Spirit of God through faith in the living God that they've just kind of signed off on spiritual warfare. And that's, I don't know how to, you know, make that any clearer. I was going to say, that's pretty doggone clear. No, you're uh, doing a, an excellent job. Wow. This message is powerful, Steve. And I, I hope uh, the people are really listening, um, because a lot of times uh, I see people are here, but they're not listening. And this is something that needs to be heard. Yeah, I, I would take, uh, you know, 300 people that listen versus 10,000 that don't listen. Steve, uh, look, uh, we, you mentioned World War III, right, uh, as a topic of this. Where are we at here? Have the first shots of World War III begun? Well, well I mean, you know, Doug, one, yeah, we're, we're in it right now. We've got the prepositioning of Russian troops for the first time in Hawaii, and I'm telling everybody to pray for the Hawaiian Christians. I don't know if you know this, but the Hawaiian Islands are literally their words, not mine. I'm not in Hawaii right now. I'm not in Kauai. I'm not in Maui, okay? But they, I'm getting reports that the Russians are all over the islands. For the first time in history, the Pearl Harbor and the Hawaiian Islands, obviously at Kauai we have the Barking Sands Missile Base, the most sophisticated, multi dimensional listening post on the planet, one of them, and the never would you have thought during the days of the Cold War or anything that Russia's uh, lead Navy and their attributes and assets, right, not attributes, but assets would be in Pearl Harbor, okay? Yeah. If you look at it, there have been stories that between now and the fall, there's 1,000 Russian exercise. I want everybody to take the word exercise out of their mouth. That's a redefinition of terms. This is the pre-placement of an invasionary forces. This is what Brother Dimitri Dudeman talked about. This is what Brother Henry Gruber talked about. Gruber, Henry, H-E-N-R-Y, G-R-U-V-E-R. When you see these guys, and I've heard all of the, you know, uh, I can't use the word, all of the moaners and groaners, I don't believe either one of them are prophet. The problem, you don't. Then perish. I don't care. I don't. I'm sorry. I used to care. I don't care. If people say, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't want to believe this, that, that which God has put in my path to keep me from going over the, the wall into eternal damnation, I can't stand in their way. I have tried to stand in their way. But the point is, Doug, is that every single military asset. Can I ask you guys a question? And I have the answer, so I want you to think this through with me on the air. I want everyone to ask themselves a question. Why would Canada which obviously is our ally, which obviously is a member of NATO, why would they allow unimpeded Russian overflights of reconnaissance uh, uh, Russian bear bombers, okay? We were told they don't have bombs, but why would they allow that? What do you think that is, Doug? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve, that question bothers me. It bothered me when I heard it, and I had to verify it was true. It's true. I don't know except to say that... Uh, I don't know, Steve. Is there a treaty on open skies? Uh, I don't know, man. 
help me out. Okay, here. but that's always that's always existed. Why now? Why now with the presence of uh, 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 um, you know Spetsnaz and through the country? Uh, what do you think? Well, well, they're they're doing it probably for reconnaissance missions. To uh, they're allowing them it. to do it to because uh, they know or think that they we are going to be overtaken. Absolutely. Well, now, if you were letting them do that, would you consider those who let them do that would be an ally, a friend, or an adversary? Oh, it's definitely an adversary. But but hasn't this been going on for for a number of years? No. And no, not, not to the degree it has. Okay? okay. Even as as before Obama became president, we were challenging the Russians in the Arctic. You know, they obviously oh. have their. No oh, course changed, you guys. Now, let me ask you this. You know, people mocked the the, the uh, presence of Chinese troops in uh, in Mexico. Okay, Mexico is the same thing. What what I don't think people understand there are secret treaties. There was a Canadian an Intel guy, and I don't know his name. I'm not covering for him. I just don't. That got me a message through a third party because he knew that you know he was tracked. And the gist of it was that both Canada, he said, and Mexico have treaties to allow the Russians and Chinese to use their countries as staging grounds for the invasion of the United States. And in agreement for that, guess what? Oh. Canada and Mexico don't get bombed. Now, look, you're not going to find out. Well, show me that in the uh, Canadian Free Press or whatever, okay? <laughs> you're not going to find it there. Look, we, we have Russian defectors that have worked at the head of uh, the KGB for 40, 50 years. They defect, and we, everybody says, well, I don't believe them, you know? See, the problem is is that we through the, through the poison food, poison water, the electromagnetic mind control, Project Monarch, all of the numbing and dumbing, infrasound, uh, uh, S and a triple S uh, 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 spread spread. Spectrum sound, in other words, carrier waves going into your brain night and day, programming you that you're, you're oblivious to what's really going in your brain when you're watching Devil Vision and listening to the uh, eye pukes, you know. The bottom line is is that we're, we're out of time. And by the way, I don't have one, so I, you know, no one can say, well, I bet you have one, too. No, I don't. So okay. the point I'm trying to make, Doug, is, is that we are being set up for conquest. We are being absolutely, and, and I remember talking to Russians, and again, um, I'll be nice when the way I say this. When everybody else thought everything was fine, I was in the process of interviewing a lot of the former Cold War guys that came out of the Soviet Union, came out of Eastern Europe, uh, our guys that basically were agency assets, you know. And, right. and I learned a lot, and I told you the story how I did it. I basically just kept my mouth shut, and those – Days I could hear better than I can hear now, and I just listened, and I would ask the right questions. And here's the deal: I believe God gave me the questions to ask, and it was no top secret stuff. But it was a, it was a, how do I say this? It was an astonishment even on the different um, KGB agents or former CIA agents, the guys that still were, you know, even uh, related to caring about this country. How easy it was, and how easy it would be to take us down. Okay, and I got to tell you something. You know what I learned uh, t- 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 uh, ten, twelve years ago. Everything I was told then is now. And so I've been on talk radio. You know, just blasting my little heart away, blasting my mouth away. And and the people who listen to me and have even listened to us recently know that nobody gets knocked off the air more than Steve Quayle and Hawk. I don't think anybody ever has. You know, and when people tell me I have inferior equipment, that really makes me, you know what, a little upset. <laughs> you know, I got news for you. You know, you need to go find a donkey farm and embrace a burrows behind because the point being is, is that it is, is – see, can I say something? This is what's the problem, you guys. There's a total mindset. It's not only called normalcy bias. It's called reni- – it's, it's called, and I, I coined this years ago. You probably remember, Doug. I called it uh, reality denial syndrome. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and so so when you live in a virtual world, the real world can no longer impact, affect, or break through, because everything you do is a phrase. Everything you do is an electronic parenthetical insert. It's an action figure. It's everything there. I think I somebody told me I don't play video games, but uh, uh, I don't know one of the newest video games. Uh, uh, number three, and if somebody knows what it is, send me an email, and I apologize, I'm not a gamer, never have been, never would be, but the bottom line is is that it, it the whole gist is the Russian takeover of the United States, 
maybe it's called a glory three or something like that. I don't know. So the point I'm trying to make is even the video games are yelling it out. Everything is telling us what's going on. But where do we do? We're, we're, we're a lawless country. Joe, you know this is that that lawlessness is rampant in the land. You've had the situation where the uh, attorney general was felt or found in contempt of Congress, and his Justice Department won't basically arrest him or won't yeah, pursue him. What a no, surprise. They, they had the officers. That they, I mean, they could have arrested him. Uh, they had the authority, the ability, and, and they could have done it. But yet he's still the attorney general. I mean, they bring him up on contempt charges and then tell him it's okay that you lied to us and you're hiding stuff and documents. You can still have your job as attorney general, the top law enforcement officer of the country. It makes no human sense. I mean, it really doesn't, uh, Steve. He, uh, through, Without looking at this spiritually, none of this makes any sense to me right. anyway. Right. I mean, as an investigator, it, look, if I, if I would have done half the stuff, if I would have said, no, I'm not going to release the documents to you um, in a courtroom or Congress or wherever, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd be sitting in jail. And you we, know? Talk, we talked about this uh, uh, the other day. The baseball players who were held uh, and put in jail for not testifying in steroid cases in front of Congress. Uh, who were brought up on perjury charges for that. Yet Holder uh, commits perjury. It's uh, in full view. He gets uh, uh, whatever by the Congress. Uh, I the well, yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah. 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 But, but see, people people outside of the world, outside of the legal world, I don't think understand the gravity. I mean, they understand the words, but they don't understand the gravity of no, that's those. That's lawlessness, and that's what Steve's saying, I, right. I think. You know, let me share something with you. You know, up in Montana, the the uh, Friends of the Earth got us to obviously reintroduce grizzly bears, and they all obviously got us to reintroduce wolves, okay? And everybody's wondering, gee, where did all the elk go? Well, they're eaten by the wolves. But there's an interesting story, thank you so much, Terry, for sending it to me, about a bear kills 70 sheep in Montana, warning, and it's pretty graphic, it's pretty sad. But what is the Russian bear? You remember hearing about beware when the Russian bear bear arises or awakes out of its slumber? Yes. Do you guys remember that? Yes. If you don't, let me share this with you. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the poet, and someone can recall it for me, Sue or anybody else, but it said, beware when the Russian bear comes out of hibernation, okay? Russia didn't lose the Cold War. What a bunch of silly twits that even think that. Russia went into the most amazing, amazing counter-espionage feigning their own destruction to set them up. In essence, they became, they, they took down the Iron Curtain, and I said it even at the time it came down, I said, you guys were all clapping at the uh, Berlin Wall coming down. Just let me make it easy for you. All the spies who had a hard time in the East getting in the West now got carte blanche. Well, the bear is the Russian. The sheep are the Americans. So what she's picking up on, and Terry, yes, there is a an amazing uh, thing here. The bear has arisen, and the sheep, which are, are the dumbasses, and it's a biblical term, I cannot believe that the American military, outside of being in cahoots with the Russians, they have to be, would allow the Russian bear their presence. We're talking 1,000 exercises in the next couple months. And it's a moot point because I think the Middle East is going to uh, obviously uh, dictate a much sooner timetable. You guys probably saw it. Ahmadinejad said, go ahead, Europe, put an embargo on us and watch what happens. They're already licking their chops. They're not licking their chops. You see, the dumbass, and I'm sorry, but the dumbass uh, Pentagon people don't get it. It's not a question of delivery systems. It's what a question of what's already in this country. It's not a question of searching for nukes that might be in this country, they're strategically positioned in this country. And 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 again, Doug, I went through the whole nine yards after uh, you know the breakup of the Soviet Union. The United States, as I said last time on your show, was the only nation that didn't ask Russia where all their pre-positioned nukes were placed in this country prior to you know the breakdown and breakup of the Soviet Union or what was seen as that. Somebody knows where they're at. And, and, and by the way, you guys, these aren't Cold War relics. These are not like the Weldon Committee. Uh, look up Kurt Weldon and the Weldon Committee. You'll find that, uh, oh, good night. Uh, you'll find that the Russian general 
who was uh, Boris Yeltsin's national security advisor, Alexander Labed, testified. You, you can see at YouTube, Labed, L-E-B-E-D. Right. I basically said that I told you the night he was, his helicopter went down. I said he was assassinated. I was literally one week away from getting him on my radio program, Doug. Oh, man. Wow. That, that, that's incredible. Yeah, now, so, Steve, you're talking about a complete and utter occupation of this country are you not absolutely but i'm before that let's put the word destruction and occupation why destroy something that you're going to occupy in other words if i if i'm going to go in and uh uh occupy a mansion we'll say in the best uh uh best neighborhood of, of my my town where i live why would i want to destroy it first before i went in and occupied it why not just kill the people drag them out and uh live their life well, first of all, there's a lot of ways to destroy people. First of all, Doug, neutron weapons, of which the Russians have plenty of, a neutron weapon is not destroyed by a fireball, and it does not destroy by a blast wave. It destroys by intense neutron bombardment, which kills uh, cells. And basically, you set a neutron weapon off, and everybody's dead, all the people within the blast radius of the, uh, depending on the, uh, you know, kilotonnage or the, uh, megatonnage of a neutron weapon, and I interviewed, when he was alive, Sam Cohen, the inventor of that, okay? okay? And he said, Steve, it's the perfect weapon to use because there's no destruction of stuff, just humans. Okay, all right. So, all right, I got, I got you. All right. And by uh, the way, it's a human advance, thank you, Sue, 12-28-2011, Russia <laughs> back to the future, and it's a whole thing about the Russian bear arising. It's human events. It's uh, 12, 28, 20, 11, so people can go and check their sources, you know. You know, it's amazing. I, I, I'm telling everybody, the day of talk radio entertainment is over. I, a bunch of firefighters, let me tell you, this is a neat compliment. A bunch of firefighters in uh, Colorado who noticed the anomalies, they found a new accelerant in some of the fires. This is not public knowledge, so we'll make it public knowledge. And according <laughs> to the firefighters, it's either phosphorus or sodium base that adding water to it and if you, you go look at uh, you know what happens uh, you know when you add water to some of these things or take the water away from some of these things the bottom line is they're saying they found a new gelatinous accelerant that they've never seen before and the more water they put on it though now these are firefighters Doug okay and they said they have to listen to us because even they see the official party line as being BS, okay? And they're now calling your show, they're calling it Radio Free America. I thought that was kind of funny. And they're calling the shows that Hawk and I are on the same thing. They said, yeah, we got to listen to you guys to get Radio Free America. But I think that's fascinating. Men who are on and women who, whose lives are on the line battling to save people's houses, and yet no one's asking the question, how are these things starting? I've caught so much crap, even from people, well, it's just a combination of the, of the yeah. That's why we got eyewitnesses talking about Russian havoc helicopters. And, oh, by the way, everyone, if two and two be four and three and three be six, then, you know, I better not go because I could make something really funny out of that whole thing. But the point being is, is that you, you better understand something. There were those fires not present. And then I put up a uh, news story on my website. You guys probably saw it, too. Al-Qaeda encourages, uh, you know, uh, 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 their, their adherence to set fires in the Northwest. Oh, they've been doing yeah. that since 2002. I mean, we, we've yeah, seen they have. This. And I told everybody I was physically in Glacier Park when I saw the guys. I know that I know that I know that I saw them, and and they basically, obviously, one of them was sure going to the bathroom a lot in 20 minutes in a restaurant, back and forth, back and forth. And they saw me watching them, and they got and one guy got nervous, and you know, and I'm just sorry, Doug. I wasn't quicker on my feet after I left. And I put two and two together, it was too late. I did call the FBI. The bottom line is is that we're at a point now where, let me make this easy, a terrorist is nothing more than an employee of someone. You can have ideological terrorism, and they'll say the right political creeds, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Terrorists have to pay their bills, too. Someone's always paying someone. And because of uh, the United States and our building up the Mujahideen, which then became the Al-Qaeda, and now because of all of our ties uh, through all the world's espionage, you can hire anybody to get them to do anything if the price is right. 
So remember, the idea, and here's the biggest issue that we've got to get everyone to see tonight. They cannot grasp what's going on until they understand. The old world system has to go away. The, the God, the God of heaven, they call him the old gods, have to give way to the new gods. Guess what that means? Jesus out, Lucifer in. Jesus out, you know, Allah in. It, the point being is, is that when I, read the, when I read the scripture, you guys, I'm appalled. At, again, I'm appalled at what is going to become and overtake this nation. Both Pastor Langford and others, where God said we have been in bondage to sin, now we're in captivity to sin. So let me tell you what that means. The Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands, guess where the people go that uh, they don't want on the Hawaiian Islands? They don't get to live in, uh, you know, their, their uh, marijuana plantation. I'm not, ever, I'm not making fun of any of this. I'm just saying, or whether they're pineapple or whatever, whatever they grow, or their coffee, you know, Kona. The bottom line is, is that they're going to be put on ships and taken to other countries, and they're going to be slaves. The people that get to stay alive, Doug, get to be slaves. The point is, is that, look... The Illuminati has a plan. That's to kill off 6.5 billion people now. They wanted to kill off 90% of the world's population when it was 6 billion. Okay, so now it's close to 7 billion or at 7 billion. The point is, is how do you do that? Ah, that magic three-letter word called war. But war is in heaven first. War is on earth. War is in the financial arena. War is in the home. Every day I hear of men and women fighting, men and women divorcing, kids turning their parents in. You probably have seen that story. Oh, yeah. We're seeing total war, total war on all fronts. And, and you know, Jesus, I understand. I'm not Jesus, but I understand why he wept. Seeing what would come, not just to Jerusalem being destroyed in 70 A.D., that was horrific, but looking down through the ages... Probably the thing that encourages his heart is knowing there would be people that, uh, that would accept him. But, but when Jesus asked the question, and, this is, I, and I asked the Lord, here's how I pray. I say, Father, your son asked the question, when the Lord returns, will he find faith in the earth? Based on what I see now, Lord, outside of you pouring out your spirit and you're intervening and a select few, I don't think so. Because the problem being is, is that people I've warned genetically engineered and, 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 and the whole thing. Nobody else did that. You know, it came into popular, popular if you will, uh, 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 context because I was talking about on Coast to Coast a long time ago. Nobody ever talked about it. Oh, they wrote about it in scientific journals. But when you bring this stuff out, here's what's interesting, and I really believe this is true. When we bring this stuff out, it's like a lock and a key that sets in motion those events. In other words, we're not causing them to happen, but they were sealed up by the Spirit of God for the time that they're revealed. So as the time they're being revealed, or a better word is unsealed, then the ramifications of the hidden knowledge, or that which was time-sensitive or time-stamped, you know, then it now becomes relevant. People couldn't have understood uh, genetic mutations, and they didn't have a very good uh, understanding of it, let's say, uh, 15 years ago. They sure do now. They sure do now. But when we're not, we're not talking about Dolly the sheep. We're not talking about, you know, some uh, uh, new medical therapy. We're talking about the monsters of mythology being brought back in now. And here's the thing, Doug, that I, I want to share with people. When Tom Horn broke the, uh, uh, his story, uh, or actually the scripture on the gates of hell not prevailing, in one of his books, and we did, a, we did an interview, it was like at that point, the whole Stargate thing, not the movie Stargate, but the whole relevance of Stargates, because one of the words for angel, obviously, is star. The other word is messenger. So messenger gates, obviously, if you have something coming through the gate, they have a message. And what the message is is mayhem. So every barrier, every boundary, every, uh, if you will, uh, roadblock, to the powers of hell and their minions and their ilk and then their what I would call bulletin board spawn, you know, or their blog spawn. That's my new word, by the way. I call them blog spawn, okay? <laughs> the bottom line is it's just my, uh, my loving uh, embrace for them. The blog spawn, then they absolutely, they're now released into this realm, and so it becomes supernaturally evil. When we're talking, and Joe and you and I and Doug talked about this, why is it that the cannibal 
quote unquote virus, why is it that they take their clothes off? And right now, you know, I think if, if I were, if, and I mean this literally, when I started writing the book on breathe no evil and all the biological experimentation that went on, went in and uh, went. Went, went, excuse me, went on and was undertaken on the Tuscaloosa, Mississippi Airmen and everything else, and then the AIDS virus. And when, when uh, uh, Len Horowitz wrote his great book, Ebola Emerging Viruses, the point is I used to have Len on the show all the time. He might be a good guy to get on your show, okay? And Len is brilliant, you guys. He did his homework. He absolutely knows what he's doing. But the point that I'm trying to make on this is it seems now that they're already experimenting with a zombie virus on Afro-Americans, okay? doesn't mean it's not going to spread to whites. This is not a racist statement. This causes me to say, and I have a lot of Afro-American black, I just call them, you know, the brethren, okay, who don't share my color. Uh, you know, and to some people that makes me a race traitor. And I say this, I said, if I were you, I'd be more worried about the color of your heart than the color of their skin. Now, look. I understand the Black Panthers don't love me. I don't love the Black Panthers. But what I'm talking about is a common thread, a genetically altered virus that can be targeted against a specific segment. And what I'm seeing, Doug, is the same thing that went on in Africa now going on in the United States. Nobody else has said it. I'll say it. I can absolutely say that the parallels are uncanny. And I can tell you this. Here's how these guys think. And then I had a very sinister man tell me this once. He said, Steve, he says, we don't really have to come up with new ways of killing people. The old ways are still effective. He said, you know why? He says, people are still stupid, and as long as they remain stupid, our, uh, our efforts will succeed. And they said, you can go ahead and try and warn them. He said, he said because by, by the time you try and warn them, you'll understand they won't listen to you. They won't believe you because they've swallowed all of our media. They've listened to us. They won't listen to you. So go ahead. In essence, burn yourself out trying to warn them. And one guy who was head of a, an intelligence organization in East Germany, he called me the priest. I said, well, that's very nice, but I'm not a priest, okay? I'm not. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a, you know, priest. But the point is, is that, that in his world, anybody who was a Christian was a priest, Okay. And so the point that I'm trying to make in this little aside is that I'm seeing parallel, I'm seeing coincidental, and when I wrote the book Breathe No Evil, nobody would, ta would touch that. Uh, Lori Garrett came out with The Coming Plague, uh, Preston, The Hot Zone. Those were, those were really great books. But I was a guy saying, hey, look, this is who's doing it, okay? As long as you kept in the realm of scientific academia, you know, you could get a thing published. When you started saying, look what's going on, look at the appropriations. And, oh, by the way, did anybody take on the dead scientists? Everybody steals my stuff, but nobody will acknowledge. Some do, and there have been a few faithful people. Why was it me that took this up? This isn't a defense issue. It's an issue of putting the record straight. These men and women, at some point in their careers or life, either were a threat to the Illuminati, the Luciferians, or it was time to cover their tracks. Because the last thing the devils at our want, they don't want anybody knowing who they are. They don't care what you do to their puppets. They don't care what you say about their puppets. But don't look up uh, beyond the top of the stage and see who's controlling the strings. So that's where we're at, Doug. That's well, where we're at, Joe. All right, Russia, Steve. the bear has arisen. Okay, now uh, you mentioned the, the dead scientists. This is so important, folks. If you have not, if you have not, uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, uh, check Steve's site out on the dead scientists. But that began like in the Clinton administration. So, I, I mean, th this whole everything we're seeing right now has been carefully crafted, orchestrated, has it not? I mean. You know, you're talking about uh, the killing scientists, killing bio, uh, uh, biological scientists, um, you know, um, overtly. I mean, it's overt to the point where, you know, a guy's got two gunshot wounds to the back of his head and they call it a suicide because they have to. Uh, I mean, it's just so in crazy. So we are really, when you look at it, we are well into this this whole process because this is actually began 15 years ago really didn't it i mean so i mean correct me if i'm wrong here uh are we not past now the point of no return yes we are Simple that's answer. not negative it's true look god said listen can i tell you something when god basically washes his hands of a nation 
And whether it's John Price, you've had him on your show, the daughter of Babylon, Mystery yeah. Babylon, Financial Babylon, I believe all of the above, just different manifestations. We're not the historic Babylon that's in Iraq, okay? We're not the Mesopotamian Babylon, but the same demons and same fallen angels, whether it's Gilgamesh, and that'll be interesting, the spirit that left Gilgamesh when he was killed, why did the U.S. military want his sarcophagus so bad in his DNA? Yeah, I carried the story on the BBC. The BBC, I just linked to the story almost, what, 15 years ago. Uh, right. Type in Gilgamesh. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Google is now forbidding any searches for guns or ammunition. Don't use them as a source for your search engine. If any of you have Gmail, don't do it if you believe in the Second Amendment because they just stopped. Did you see that, Doug? They will not allow any searches for guns, firearms, ammunition to go through their search engines anymore. No, I, I didn't see that actually. So okay, well that that's news to me. And okay, well that that's believable. I mean, or not only believable, but that's to be expected, I should say. Right. Uh, and so you know, use Yahoo, Alta Vista, go. And I mean, you know, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I, I I was when Star Wars was a big event and behind the scenes, you know, and obviously we had Reagan doing the stuff and and Danny Graham and and others really and, and working on that. The, the same thing happened with scientists that were being uh, uh, murdered and journalists in Britain. Uh, uh, the Marconi assassinations, you can look up dead scientists. I mean, there was a time there when there must have been at least two to three dozen scientists murdered who were working on Star Wars, okay? So mm. that was a preemptive or a preparatory indication that what, what would happen in the future. Now, it's important for people to understand this. For those of us who do our homework, and I've done this for 40 years, and I'm not saying I'm a happy camper, but at least, you know, I'll go into the woods still. The point being is is that we're, we're at a period where it's all coming down. Doug, you keep asking me. I think you have a, and please don't take this wrong, but you would hope it would turn around, brother. It ain't going to turn around because it's designed not to turn around. It's planned obsolescence. Unfortunately, it's the United States of America. I tell you, man, I'm a hard sell sometimes, and sometimes I can't see. You know, it's it's so difficult for me sometimes. Look, and and I get emails too from people. Uh, hey, you know, I just I just drove from uh, uh, Syracuse, New York, to uh, uh, to Buffalo. Everything is normal. People are commerce is taking place. Everything is normal. Nothing is out of order. How can you say? How can you get on the radio, Doug, and say? that things are so bad. Steve, how can you have Steve come on and say things are so bad? Because okay, everything is so I have normal. an answer for that, okay? Okay, please. It's real simple. It's not bad for them, so therefore it's good for everyone. It only becomes bad for them when it becomes bad for them. That's called normalcy bias. We have 5 million people without power. West Virginia, the water companies. And, 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 and Doug, this is the most self-centered, and I'm going to say this to whoever sent you that email, they are the most self-centered people in the universe. I had one guy that I finally blocked his email because that's the whole issue, okay? As long as it's okay for them, they are not standing in line. They cannot believe because they're in a normal mode that it will ever go to the non-normal mode. Tell that to a firefighter putting out 60,000, 70,000 acres. Uh. Tell that to the people whose homes have been burned. Tell that to the people that are 50 million on food stamps. Tell that to the people that have lost. And, you know, I was mocked when I said 20 to 30 million homes. That's what my friend Via told me that the banks aren't uh, admitting to. And he was mocked. Who is this man? You know, well, the answer is, is that the people that ask that, they are so myopic that they do not see the world around them. Therefore, when the world around them comes crashing down, they'll have no one. If the world bad, look, here's what we're telling people. We're telling people that one thousand Russian exercises are going on, that the Russian plan is for the invasion of the United States. Oh, I don't believe in Henry Groover's vision. I don't believe. I, it doesn't matter, okay? What matters is up until this time in history, it has never taken place. And even the synchronicity of events and the timing of events and even the, 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 the admission on mainstream TV that the international bankers control the world, maybe it's the best for us after all. Man, Alex Jones used to get beat up over that. Oh, yeah. I got beat up over that. 
for that. It was always conspiracy, conspiracy. So when I hear the word, you're a conspiracy nut, okay, or you're a fear monger, this is what they call me, or you're a doom preacher, or you're a, you, you sell fear to sell stuff, I, my answer to you is the same. And you're a moron, and you're going to die in your denial. And I know what it means to call names, okay? But when you implicitly assume that because life is good for you, that it can't be bad for anyone else, that is the most, if you will, prideful and arrogant position and shame on you shame on you see that's the reason we're in this problem is because nobody gives a damn about anybody else they're all about themselves and each man does that which is right in his own sight even when it comes to rationing away others misfortune okay steve i i i took it i took it a little bit differently i took it to mean that hey i'm looking around i'm not seeing any uh any uh chaos problems chaos. yeah um, you know, but yeah, no, but Steve's right. I understand exactly what he's saying because they're not looking at the Maybe, Joe, picture. you can say it better than I can because I answered their question. It's because they don't see it in their backyard. They don't believe it can be in the next county over. Because they don't see it in their own state at this point, they don't care about Colorado uh, on fire. Okay. Because yeah, I got they're you. not, their son wasn't slaughtered in Afghanistan because their son wasn't beheaded and urinated on by 21 Taliban members and then being given a line of bull manure from uh, the military and, and saying, you know, different things. And then it all went back to guess what? Uh, you know, I better stop here because I'm going to get into trouble if I go any further. But let's just say this well, it's you're because right. I mean... they've never lived it. They never died, or forgive me, they've never had anyone die close to them, and because of their normalcy bias. Sure, Doug, that's the same thing that we, we encountered. Remember, we were talking about, hey, you guys, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in, in Buffalo, New York, and oh, yeah. some really nasty people. And in, because, wait until the goons show up at their house. Wait until their uh, car catches fire. Wait until they've had someone who's their best friend or feigns to be their press, best friend betray them. Uh, unto evil hands. Wait until they find out the system doesn't work for them, it works against them. Wait until they're uh, eaten up and spit out by the machine. What I've been trying to do, and I have failed. I've had some success, but look, with someone who's on talk radio as long as I have, the one thing I cannot bridge is I cannot overcome people's selfishness, and I cannot overcome their denial. I cannot do it. So, these events, you're asking me, Doug, why are all these events happening? Even the mainstream press that doesn't want to acknowledge that God is a holy God, that even exists, you know, they still have to use biblical terms because there's no other reference that they can even come up with. No, no, if you will, uh, Lucifer, uh, uh, Luc uh, you know, Lucifer's dictionary of redefinition because reality still has to be related to language. So they've tried to change the language. It doesn't matter if it's ebonics. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, jive talking. It doesn't matter if it's intellectual talking. It doesn't matter. There are still words that are still containers, and dead is dead, okay? And that's what these people are. It's zombies. And can I be blunt with you? This is why I have had to do serious soul searching, and, 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 and this is why a certain uh, uh, general friend of mine uh, was asked, why do you want to protect those people anyway? Why do you want to? And he said, because God's called me to. And, you know, I say this to myself. I say, I look at the mirror, believe it or not, and I go, how bloody stupid can you be to subject yourself to this kind of ridicule? What's in it for you, Steve, besides, you know, getting upset, getting angry, oh, or abrasive? i got to tell you something. That was my favorite term last week, Doug. You know? Abrasive. Okay. Yeah, I want to be a bloody burr under that person's saddle, you know? And to talk about it, you know, is just, it's insanity. But here's the thing. Sin is insanity. And when there is no power of the living God to ransom, redeem, and to set free a person from sin, they see sin as an act. They fail to acknowledge it as a power, and therefore they're powerless against the power of sin, still trying to, you know, deal with their acts of sin. You've got to lay the acts of redemption, forgiveness, and repentance to the root of evil, and if you get rid of the root of evil, the fruit of evil goes. Right. And, Steve, before I, I know Joe's got a couple things, but i got to tell you this. It's not like we want to be here. I mean, do you get that in your spirit? It's not like we want to do what we're doing. It's that if we look at ourselves in the mirror and we don't do what we're doing, it's we, it, we're, letting, we're letting others down, we're letting ourselves down, and more importantly, we're letting God down. Is that kind of, in, in a way, what's going on here? 
Well, I, I think that's the way you would put it into your, you know, into your framework. Because number one, Doug, you're called to do it, okay? Number two, God's still pleading with people, and 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 uh, that's why I'm so glad that the real and I I say men of God that I look up to, that I am accountable to. So when someone comes at me and tells me they're having 41 dreams, 59 visions and 69 angelic visitations, and they don't even know the basic scripture, and they're rewriting it through whatever doctrine or dogma they have, I just say, I don't receive it. Look, if if somebody says, I don't want to receive anything you say, my question is, Doug and Joe, do you wonder why people who say, why do you guys do this, why do they listen? Well, you get the odd, well, because I have something to mock. I've heard that. Or your cheap entertainment, you know, uh, or uh, whatever. But, you know, hey, I don't care. But why do they listen? You know, then shut the bloody radio off. Do you know why they can't, though? Because deep down in their heart, this is an unnatural thing. It's not just Doug Hagman, Joe Hagman, and Steve Quayle. It's the multitude of intercessors praying. It's the pleading of God's children, pleading before the throne, God, open the eyes of those who still can see. Open the ears of those who still can hear. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this, I don't know the time. I don't know the date. No more times, no more dates. I don't know that stuff. But I do know this. I do know that there comes a time when Jesus himself said the night comes when no man can work. we got people off the Internet all over. You know, I saw where, where one brother, God bless him, and so the guy that I sent you the email about a certain former associate, Associate of yours and, and yep. associate of mine, uh, he stuck up for me. I thought this is one of the first guys I've ever seen stick up for me publicly, and I, I want to thank him. But the bottom line is this: is it's not about sticking up for me or Doug or Joe. It's about sticking up for Jesus. And what in the uh, eternal purpose of the living God do these people anticipate when they will not stand up for their Savior and they hear the words, "Depart from me, I never knew you." But Jesus, I was a Christian. Did you confess me before men? No, I was afraid. What did my word say about the fearful and cowards? Oh, they go into the lake of fire. Well, I didn't think it applied to me. It's not a question anymore of what you think. What do you know? And that's the, the, my answer to those people. What do they know, Doug? They can make their situation. They go to work. You know what? They suffer from normalcy bias. And because they suffer from normalcy bias, you know, they can't make a, 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 a how do I say this? A, they don't even have the perceptive skills or abilities to see what's going on with the rest of the world. Yeah. Hello? Every municipality in the United States is flat-ass broke. Hello? There's no earning structure or jobs. Just because you got one doesn't mean 50 million people or 100 million people are unemployed. Hello? Hello? You know? See, it, it, it doesn't matter to them because the only thing they can see is the uh, glass on the end of their nose as they look down at everybody, is, is, and their prayers will soon uh, come to haunt them. Like the guy who said, oh, I'm so glad I'm not like them. And instantly the voice of uh, uh, the Lord was heard, and he said, welcome to their world. And they were yeah. thrust into that world. I'm telling you this, there is no empathy, there is no love, there is no sympathy. And, you know, I, again, it's it's amazing to me. How about the veterans of the United States? Everybody waves the flag. How about the people that put the, what are the yellow ribbons on their vehicles? Do they stop and give a veteran a 50, 100? I absolutely think it's horrific that there should be any veterans homeless. And yet, how about the guys that are, well, I think it's close to a million vets, can't even get their medical care paid for due to the current administration. And then when you find out the head of Veterans Administration really doesn't like veterans. Gee, should that come as an, uh, as any surprise? There is no linkage between root of evil, fruit of evil. There is no linkage between righteousness and unrighteousness. Because everybody who goes to church thinks, hey, I hear it all the time. I hear this more than, well, why would God judge America? We send more missionaries. I say, you want to bet? I guarantee you we send more uh, uh, profane than we send righteous. I guarantee you that the rest of the world says, what's happened to you, America? I get I get 100 emails a week from other parts of the world, no exaggeration, saying, what's happened to your nation? What's happened? What's happened? And all I say is, the pukes in the pulpit committed high treason against their God. And by the way, if everybody thinks I'm being a little harsh, I've even had people say, well, you're so harsh, you're so abrasive, you're so unloving. 
You know, step up into the arena, pal, and see, you know, again, look, James said, show me your uh, works and I'll believe you have faith, but don't talk. And then I get the moron, and, and when I say moron, here's what I, uh, my definition of moron isn't an unkind term. It's someone that will deny reality when faced with overwhelming evidence because they do not have the emotional ability to cope with their own irrelevance in their argument. Does that make a sense? Oh, so that's what I'm yeah. calling. And, and so yeah. I'm not trying to be unkind. Someone says, where's the love of Jesus in you? I said, it's listening, it's, it's whispering in your ear, it's screaming in as best I know how. And look, the bottom line is I, I can't tell you guys how late it is in the game. Yeah, I, 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 just, there's, there's, I lack the words. So the Lord says, Steve. You've got to warn people lateness of the hour because the Bible doesn't say, oh, it'll be, uh, you know, a general uh, destruction coming upon the people. He said sudden destruction for when they say peace and safety. Look, you guys, uh, you know, uh, Prince may have written the song Party Like It's 1999, but Nero will rise up to criticize this presidency because I got news for you. There's never been a um, greater show of absolute contempt for the working man by those who are living higher on the hog than anybody in the history of the presidency at the people's expense. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like a vampire giving you every blood-building drug he can give you just to suck it all dry. But he leaves you one drop of blood just to say, see, I told you I was going to do it, and guess what? You voted for me. Yeah. And what you're talking about with the people, the the lack of vision, the lack of the, they have a prideful, conceited tunnel vision, and uh, you know they like you said it does not affect them or they don't care about it until it affects them. And I have uh, have family down there experiencing this, uh, not and not going through good times. Uh, they obviously don't listen to the show and know to be prepared. Um, also, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I the Presbyterian Church has changed the definition of marriage as their official religion from a man and a woman to two people. And that just happened uh, earlier, in, or middle of June. Uh, I got, I heard that today uh, from my mother, who we go to a Presbyterian church. And this is continuing to happen. Uh, it, it's a slap in the face to God, the abortions, the gay marriage, the uh, you know pornographic... Films and that are so available that the Hollywood satanic entertainment system uh, that keeps everyone distracted. They are living in a false reality, as you said, Steve, and it is the deception. And and there's no way out of it unless you're slapped in the face when you understand what you know somebody's telling you the truth, uh, and, and you, you can develop those critical thinking skills. But the thinking skills are what is lacking in the people: the the lack of vision, the lack of uh, understanding. Well, Joe, you remember the famous statement in history? Uh, who was it? It was either, uh, I know who it was. It was Goering, uh, the head of the German Luftwaffe. He said, it's a good thing for us that people don't think. Well, that's true, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. And, it, and it's true. And see, so <laughs> here's the thing. And I say, here's the thing. The thing is right before us. Do you think anybody who has the word sudden in front of destruction, whether it's theirs, their family? I mean, look, most people who were making good money, you know, prior to the, the markets crashing, real estate crashing, most people thought that life would go on forever, okay? That's true. But yeah. you can take anybody who's now living in a tent, who is living in a six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar home or more, and you know what they they'll every and most of them I've interviewed and talked to them, they said, you know what, we thought it would go on forever. That's one of the standard statements I get, and I said, you know what, nothing goes on forever except eternal judgment or eternal joy. And and I'm not trying to be quote unquote religious. Jesus said it this way. And I, I can only quote him because it's his words that keep me sane. It's his words that keep me focused. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Again, no, Joe, you no. went on YouTube and you looked at the different YouTube uh, videos of hell. You could have one or two people varying by degree and, let's say, seeing the same uh, uh, view of hell. But the, what's astonishing to me is, is that the central themes of hell are it's forever. And forever doesn't mean time. It means it is your continual state of existence and eternity in the most deplorable, hopeless, absolute, abject uh, 
uh, painful mentally, physically, and psychology because you don't cease to be. See, a lot of people think when they die, they just uh, the, you know that they, they just go be one with the universe. That'd be nice, you know, kind of a nihilistic view, but it ain't that way. And so now that we're in the real world, people would better turn. And I think that this is the word that that I would say to everyone is simply this: multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is at hand. And people are going to have to make decisions. That's what David said the Lord impressed upon him the other night in prayer, David Langford. That's what Henry Groover said. The Lord gave him the message. The Lord basically said to me, Steve, from this point out, all that matters is souls. Because really, what can I do? What can I say? Do I need to write another book? No. What I need to do is to, if, to, to as many as received him. See, not everybody received Jesus. And it finally dawned on me, Doug, that not everybody is going to receive me. Jesus said they hated me without a cause. I said, well, Lord, if they hated you without a cause, and boy, I'm, I'm in good company. And the point that I'm trying to say is this. The truth will always bring out the greatest resistance. Because when you come to the point where you no longer lie to yourselves or others, but more importantly to God, that point when you're done lying to God and blaming him for everything that went on in your life, when you don't realize the devil's been trying to take it, and he, by honoring your free will, has been putting roadblock and roadblock in your life to be able to come to accept him. I'm telling you, Doug, the only thing that's going to move people uh, off dead center is a miraculous intervention of the spirit of the living God in their specific lives. Not a general move, a specific move. You know where it starts with? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to teach me what it means to be a follower. And I repent, Lord, of all my sin. Somebody says, oh, that's just easy believism. No, that's just the beginning. That's the hardest decision anybody will ever make in their life. And it's the easiest, too. It's easy to make it. But once they make it, obviously, God will move heaven and earth. And I've said this before, Doug, we have lost track of eternity so that the only thing that matters is the immediacy of our, our current situation. In other words, am I, am I fed? Am I having enough this or that? You know, Are my needs met? Are my vacation requirements met? Vacation? Yep. i got news for you. The day of vacations are coming to an end. Yep. Are my TV shows on? Uh, you know, yeah, am I having a good yeah. day? You know, am I feeling bad for myself? Am I, you know, and that's part of it. The the slothfulness. The yeah, self- here's another one. This is I want to answer this one email on the air because I get this probably 25 times a week. Okay, uh, you know, in the event we do go to war, do you think we should do as Jesus didn't allow the demons to kill us without a fight? Jesus did not allow anyone to kill him. He said, "No man takes my life; I lay it down." Or do you think it's okay to? take a life in this battle to protect family. Absolutely. Self-defense is a mandatory requirement of the Scripture. Paul said, if any man doesn't provide for his family, he's worse than an infidel. For God to deny self-defense would be to sanction suicide. And that's why, Doug, I believe a false errant understanding of self-defense. Look, even the disciples had to sell their cloaks and buy a couple swords, okay? Uh, you know, Paul had to travel with the sword. There were really bad people in Paul's day. But Paul determined nothing was going to stop him until God told him, Paul, your time's up. Time to come home. And so, you know, I, this thing about pacifists, I don't know if you guys saw the biggest story, I believe, was that uh, the DHS has been partnering with churches, and the churches, especially, I think, 20 black churches now, are asking their parishioners to turn in their guns, okay? Yeah. Well, I think one of the greatest crimes that has ever happened is, is that the, the, uh, the idea of self-defense and personal responsibility responsibility have never been linked. I can tell you point blank that the idea is this, simply this. If the Second Amendment goes, you go. And somebody says, well, are you, well what are you going to do? I said, well, by the grace of God, I intend to resist evil. Do I believe that uh, I can overcome a hellfire missile from a drone? No, but Jesus can. And until I'm done, they can't take me with a Hellfire missile or a sniper's bullet. Or in your case, Doug, blowing up your car. Or in my case, sending teams from Buffalo. You know, the point is is that, that we have a destiny to fulfill. Because God is not going to basically allow... 
the total taking out. Jesus wasn't allowed to be killed. They tried to kill Jesus so many times before the crucifixion, but when the crucifixion time came, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane asking the Lord to allow him, uh, not, nevertheless, not to take the cup to, from him. See, every Christian I know that believes in the pre-tribulation rapture, which, by the way, I believe is the great deception, part of the great deception, because the thing is, those people were given a lie. They believe a lie. Now, what does a lie do when it's believed, okay? Number one, it gives the lie power over you. Number two, it changes your perspective. Number three, it causes you to let off your guard. Number four, it provides an unrealistic expectation. And, and number six, and maybe even number six and seven, is it gives you a hope that isn't real, and it gives you a disappointment when it fails. Now, I've never yeah. said that in that order before because I've never dealt with that and that issue before. The issue with the rapture isn't to argue with me and give me your proof text because I can give you as many as you give me. It's to take it to Jesus. It's to be faithful unto the end. Why does Jesus say to them that overcome will I give a crown? Okay, well, it's different than overcoming. And, and by the way, you guys, the greatest slaughter in the history of modern-day Christendom was in China when the Chinese Christians embraced the pre-tribulation rapture and the prophet went around telling them not to worry, and guess what? They needed to worry. They needed to heed the words of the real ones. And as Watchman E said in his book, he said, it's that they failed to heed the, the true prophets of God and listen to the lies who promised them the easy way out. If someone tells you you're going to go through it tough, if they prepare you to go through it tough, it's like boot camp. It's like training. And that's what the churches have failed to do. That's why when God starts to judge, I'm telling you this, you couldn't get me within a hundred yards of a church with a lukewarm pastor. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there when the people finally figure out they've been lied to. I don't want to be there if God chooses in that specific instance. And I certainly wouldn't go there if a church is saying, turn in your firearms to be good citizens, you know. What about citizens of heaven? What about having a, a responsibility to your fellow men to make a difference and to help them? And by the way, I'm no bleeding heart liberal. I'm probably the antithesis of that, but neither am I a neocon, a conservative, a Republican. Those words all make me vomit because it's part of the same uh, 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 paradigm. It's two sides of an evil coin. And ladies and gentlemen, either get a death one way or death the other. And I like what somebody had a battle cry, no king but Jesus. That certainly doesn't make the liberals happy. But you see, everyone's looking for a political solution still. When I hear a Christian, tell me they're Christian then that they just can't wait for uh, you know, the the guy running against uh, uh, Obama to win, you know, and, and even the Ron Paul people. I said, I love Ron Paul's stand on the economics. I was trained in the Austrian School of Economics. I read Rothbard. I read uh, uh, all of the different, you know, even even guys like Gary North and, 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 oh, good night, so many of them for so many years. But the point being is that, we're in a time period unlike any other. Jesus said there's never been a time like it, nor would there ever be another time like it again. And except the days be shortened, there be no flesh alive. Yet for the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened. That's why everybody turns, uh, uh, they, they go to work on Monday, and it seems like you jump from Monday to Friday to Sunday and just to go start the whole thing over. What is the rest of the week? It's gone. Time is speeding up. Absolutely. And, Steve, I've been uh, having this, you know, great deception. I've been thinking about this for the last three days. I can't stop thinking about it. I've been reading the Bible, and all I can think of, and you talk, you hit the key, or the political solution. So many people are sucked into that. Now we have people talking about, uh, and this is for some reason uh, what I've been hearing, uh, the fall of the New World Order. If that were to happen, and certain people would uh, come out and claim responsibility for that, and they would say, look, we took out the corruption, we took out the problems, you know, come trust us. Uh, something like that, the blue beam rapture, uh, people are talking about this everywhere. There's the New Agers out there, and they're everywhere. And they've infiltrated everything on the Internet. And this is what they're saying. Oh, sure, and, I, and I want to tell everybody, I categorically renounce the whole Drake movement. I categorically renounce the whole Benjamin Fulford thing. I, and look, those guys have their opinions, but uh, can I tell you something? Uh, as Paul Volcker said, the former head of the Fed, hell, son, we own them all. The point being <laughs> is that they're still locked into a paradigm. And look, they want, can I tell you what everybody wants? They want peace without Jesus because 
Jesus has his demands. And his demands are number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you guys even could, if, I think if any of us could get a true glimpse of the occultism in the White House, as of the occultism in the Illuminati, of the human sacrifice, even the even some of the Satanists that I've talked to over the years, even some of the ultimate Luciferians, they say it still surprises us, Steve. And and look. Those guys talk to me. I'm not saying I carry on extensive conversations, but in times past when they have, they, he said, you Christians are too bloody dumb to understand. We're the ones behind abortion. I actually said I'm straight, and I said, no, you weren't. It was the fallen angels, but you're their offspring. So, yeah, yeah, you can take claim for it in this generation. That is my answer, by the way. And the point is, as they say, you, they're just too dumb to see. This is the ultimate sacrifice to Lucifer. That's why Hawk always says the Lucy sacrifice. That's what war is, you guys. War is the blood sacrifice of the Luciferian powers that be to their God. God, their God of war. The, you know, the Romans may have called him Mars, and the Greeks may have called him something else. Nobody else called there, but the bottom line, it's the same behind the scenes. We're not going to stop being at war, are we? I mean, this is a – look, Syria – I mean, what's going on in Syria right now? I mean, just to, just to put uh, this in uh, current context, uh, Steve, we are essentially – as I said before, past the point of no return, but now we're involved. We're going to be involved in Syria, which is going to bring in Russia and China. Obviously, the debt's unsustainable. All of this is going to come collapsing at one time, is it not? I mean, is this what you well, see? Well, yeah, it is collapsing at one time. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Look, here's the problem. If the churches have been warning about what's happening in the Middle East, now look, I have. There are others who have been. You know, some people yep. have on talk radio focused on the the Illuminati and the you know Alex has had his focus. I've had mine. Hawks had his. There are, there are people that are on the radio for a long time, and I'm not just saying we're the only three guys. I'm just trying to make this quick. But the point is, is that it's fascinating to me. Is that again when I get that question you asked me from someone in the chat room, everything's normal. How in the uh, how in the uh, well, how in the universe? There we go. Can they even make that statement with the fact that the nuclear emergency search teams are up? One faction of the government's trying to find them. The other uh, faction of the government's trying to hide them. There's war in the heavens. There's war in our government. There's war in the military. There's war in the intelligence agencies. There's war in the church. There's war in the Catholic church. There's war in the economy. There's war in the homes. Where can you go to be free from war? There's war on you even if you don't deny it or if you don't acknowledge it. The people that just ask you that, what about the chemtrails? What about the water they're drinking? What about the food they're eating? Okay, uh, you know this is this is this is something really important. The Russia and this is this is something that Hawk said. Steve, remind the people of this. The Russians are here, I'm reading what he wrote, are here now in Konas are doing great terror to soften up targets. If you don't know what great terror is, shut up and go learn what great terror is, and then you can address the subject. That number one goal is, number one, so fear, create agitation, and, uh, and they're on time with one of the most likely attack windows in the Middle East. Notice the Middle East and what's going on here are simultaneous eruptions, threats, almost concurrently happening in real time. And then he says, now that Russia and Red China have put up to 90,000 troops into Syria and have all their nuclear weapons in TARDIS and La uh, Latakia, as well as the new uh, Panzer missiles and Super Sunburns they brought into Syria. Let me talk about Super Sunburns. Nobody was even talking about those when Hawk and I were talking about them. Basically what that means, you guys, is every single nuclear aircraft carrier up until a certain point was ultimately vulnerable. The Iranian military plan for our, our uh, uh, aircraft carriers, and all eight are out to sea, by the way, now, is to basically overwhelm them with sunburn missiles launched from high speed, and I want to share this, high speed, what most people would consider, uh, you know, uh, 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 Bahama racing boats, their version of it, and simply overwhelm with superior numbers. And like one general from Special Operations told me, he said, look, I can handle 100 missiles, I can handle 200 missiles, but I can't handle 3,000 missiles, okay? And that was three or four years ago he told me that. Mm. And guess what? The headline right now is, Iran states, we will 
conquer the world, and especially Israel, with our overwhelming missile superiority. They're not just empty boasters, okay? Now listen, they're all ready for all-out World War III. That's the title of the show. You know what's funny, Doug? As prophetic as it is, so I would say this, no matter what I would speak about, in the, and, and I'm not, look, it's just, it's just like when Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, he was serious. I could talk about anything, and immediately someone would rise up, and out of their personal or out of their uh, demonically inspired or controlled uh, 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 catalyst, they would say, well, I don't think or I don't believe or blah, 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 everything's fine, okay? Yeah, everything's fine for them. Tell that to the people in Syria right now. Tell that to the people in Iraq. Tell that to the people in Chernobyl that still have children that are so deformed that they have to put them in institutions because it makes them vomit to look at their own kids. Oh, and by the way, did you see the news on Fukushima 4? The pool's dry. When yeah. Fukushima, the fact is, is that there should be massive, massive, massive requests from every, and here's the point, every reliable mainstream news media for the truth on Fukushima, there is no, not, no such thing. When the truth becomes known to the American people, when you know you're going to die and you're backed into a corner, you have no other choice but to lash out and fight. And the day is coming, Doug and Joe, and I believe we're talking a very near term, don't know when, but we're talking a absolute debacle that literally the scripture will be filled, even in the skeptics' ears, sudden destruction come on like a travail comes upon a woman with child. The Spetsnaz here, they're turning up all their emplacements of nuclear weapons. And again, if you don't understand what Spetsnaz is, I will spell it. S-P-E-T-S-N-A-Z, okay? S-P- you know what their, their goal is? Here's, it's, it's, it, you can go look it up on Wikipedia. They are assassins. They are trained to blow up dams, bridges, oil refiners, chemical plants, military bases. And then the good news for all the traders on the blue list, they get to go and tap you. Tap is a euphemism for assassinate you. The satellite launch from Canaveral last Friday of a new spy satellite, hmm, maybe the old one got shot down. And what about all of the, quote, meteors? Or what about the people that are reporting F-16 fighters of uh, uh, taking on red fireballs. If it was just a meteor, would they take on with an F-16? I don't think so. That's literally today in uh, the Midwest. So all these things are no longer just discontinuous. It's not like the like the old. Do you remember you guys the old uh, magazines called True and Argosy? Oh yes, I yeah. do. True. Yep. yep, that was kind of like the official talk radio version in printed form. Okay. Yep. I can remember reading True and Argosy because it was about adventure, it was about giants, and it was about uh, strange civilizations, and blah, 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 blah. Now all that stuff is coming into the forefront, and it's coming in so loud and clear, and it's like all the things that have been hidden or hidden away from people now are being brought out. And, I mean, it's, it's like I can tell the switch is turning on on some now, but I'm just praying that it would turn on more. So, you know, we have to. We have to work while it's yet day. And, I, and if anybody hasn't seen the photo that's on my website, please go and look at the photo of the day. Never have I had such a positive response to the photo of the day. Did you see it, Doug? I, I have not yet, Steve, no. Uh, have it, you it, seen it, Joe? No, uh, I have not. Okay, uh, would you guys at least do this at the break? Will you go look at it? What it is, it's probably the biggest storm that I've ever had to the west of me. It's taken off my deck in Montana. Yet there was a giant column of light, like a glorious, and I mean, you, when you see it, I, I, I don't think anybody's ever seen it like this, and I just photographed it off my deck with my 22 megapixel camera. And, and for the record, I don't know how to do Photoshop. I don't have Photoshop, so it's not Photoshop. But it's the most striking uh, uh, photo I think I've ever posted from a response. Now, look, you need to understand that if you'll take a look at that, it will be the most encouraging thing. I, and, and this is the caption, okay? It's like a, a, a spotlight of God's glory shining through incredibly dark clouds. So please, ladies and gentlemen, go take a look at this because it will be gone tomorrow. And I put through the, through the caption, even though darkness descends upon the United States, Jesus is the light that shines through the darkness. He is the light of the world. And I felt like when I saw that, I said, Lord, I, I, listen, I, I'm a photographer. I, I was out today shooting aerial pictures, you guys. I shoot 500 to 700 pictures when I'm out shooting photos, okay? 
Mm. But I've never had a photograph like this in my entire life. And I thought, how cool is God? How amazingly redemptive, how spectacularly wonderful that a photo like that reminded me that it's going to get dark, Steve, but never forget who the light of the world is. So please, ladies and gentlemen, go and look at that photo. It will only be up tonight. Tonight is, uh, what is tonight? July 1st, uh, whatever time it is in Montana, 8.54, uh, 10.54 Eastern, but please look at that photo. I have never had the response, Doug, and that's why I want you guys to see it. If you want to see uh, an example of one picture being worth more than a 1,000 words, this is the picture to look at. Again, I feel it was a gift from the living God to show people, to remind them, sure, the storm's coming, coming, forgive me, the storm is here, but guess what? I'm beyond the storm, I'm in control of the storm, and I'm the light of the world. Everybody's in darkness, I'll tell you what, the scripture promises, when you've got Jesus, it doesn't matter how dark it is, because Jesus isn't like the ever-ready bunny, okay? Jesus is like the light of the world, and he will not leave his people in darkness. That's why it's safe to trust him. I tell you what, I don't put your trust in man, me or any man. Put your trust in Jesus. He's the only one who can keep his end of the bargain up, even when we let him down. And, Doug, please go look at that. And can we take a break? Uh, uh, yeah, we're, in fact, we are up against the uh, top of the hour. And I, I just posted the link um, to that photograph in the chat room. Yeah, I'm looking uh, at the photograph you. now. It's beautiful. It, it's it's uh, you know what? It's amazing. It's, you cannot even describe it. Uh, I, I'm just it's just unbelievable. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this very special Sunday edition. Our very special guest is Steve Quayle. We're going to be right back after about three minutes of messages. Stay tuned, please. Second hour, we are joined by special guest Steve Quayle. We have covered so much, and I have to backtrack a little bit. Um, Steve, uh, before the break, we we talked. You covered so much, uh, and we we were talking about um, the media and, and the deception and th- that's out there, and and the people that are not seeking the knowledge. And there's those that are are seeking knowledge but looking the wrong way, and those that are not seeking knowledge, which is the majority of the public in America. And because they are not seeking, because their churches aren't doing their jobs and helping them seek the truth. Uh, because the society has all but it's banned Jesus and, and the message of Jesus, nobody's seeking for for the information that is most important. So I guess my question is, how can we, uh, with the time we have left, be most effective in reaching the people that can be helped? Well, number one, I don't believe that you can go into being affected effective for the Lord without asking the Lord, who do you want me to talk to today? Because effective uh, in our perspective may not be effective in his. I can tell you a neat thing, Joe. If I pray in the day and I say, Lord, make me a blessing to someone today, he makes me a blessing to someone. If I forget to do that, it's kind of like the day has, I feel now, if I don't, and I do it almost every day, I feel like I've got to use whatever time I have, okay, and, and I live in a, a, a different world than most people, okay, and, and Doug, you know what it's like, too, and your dad knows what it's like, but, you, you know, I, I don't take the same routes to work, I obviously check my car, I have, uh, you know, electronics to make sure, but look, all that's good and fancy and, and all that crap, but at the end of the day, it's a praying intercessors, and so, I, Joe, here's what I'm saying, to be effective, one has to get the plan, The plan is this. God says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So seek the Lord and say, Lord, who do you want me? See, that beats handing out, uh, you know, uh, trying to to give gospel to, uh, you know, uh, the international uh, hate God convention. If God tells you to do it, you'll be effective. But the reason why we're not effective is because we're not equipped. And to equip a saint, first and foremost, one has to have power. And the power is not the power of the presentation. It's not a Dale Carnegie course with the gospel. It's not the strength of the argument. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, to as many as received him, Jesus, gave he the power to become the sons of God. 
When Jesus told the disciples these are the same guys that walked and talked with him, that saw his miracles, that cast out demons, he said, you guys have to go and wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit that whom I promise you, the comforter will come, and you cannot go into the world without him. People are going naked into the biggest battle of eternity. And that's why they're getting hauled off the battlefield in stretchers. And look, I believe that every Christian, once they start to sense the victory, victory tastes pretty good compared to living a life of lies and defeat. And what what's happening, Joe? And and again, if you're if, and to anyone who's in a lukewarm church, flee it as if you were if it were the plague. If you're hearing uh, pastors say, "Oh, stay away from those people; they're conspiracy nuts." Oh, by the way, we're going to register you all with the DHS. So when things get bad, we'll we'll take you to their places and they'll feed you and it'll be lovely. Well, uh, but of course, I get to stay in my mansion. You see what's happening is the time of Jeremiah's ultimate frustration was when no matter how he tried, with the people that would say evil is good and good is evil, and Jeremiah became frustrated beyond, I believe, any prophet in the Old Testament because the people could no longer understand what the truth is because they gave strength to the lie, they reinforced the lie, and they would listen nothing unless it was a lie. Gee, that sounds like modern America and, and devil vision to me. Are you there? Yes, we are here. Uh, I oh, am oh, okay. okay. Hear me? There, there we I go. I thought we Steve. got knocked off again. Yeah, no. Steve, let me ask you a question. I, I, I don't know how to explain this, okay? I, I, and I can share this with, with our listeners. You know, it seemed like you and I were on the same uh, wavelength, uh, so to speak, today. Uh, look, I, I, I looked at the, uh, as I normally do, I, I looked at the headlines, I looked at the news, I looked at what's going on in America and across the world. The first thing this morning, I, know, I was like 5 o'clock in the morning, and I had this overwhelming, overwhelming sense that what I was looking at was was out of the uh, norm. It was the it, I was looking into some spiritual through some spiritual prism of some kind. The deep dark uh, I don't know foreboding I had was just absolutely incredible. And I'm not trying to you know speak in no, the I, it's I, overwhelming. I, I, and, and I had to walk away, and I'm thinking. Uh, this is what I'm seeing is biblical. It's but 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 it's beyond that. There's so, it's like when we do an investigation and we think, okay, we, we see all the stuff and all the elements of of uh, things in front of us, but we're it, 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 something is still not right, and something big is still not right. That's the way I felt this morning, and, and I feel like the time is so short. But I don't even know how to articulate what I feel. Well, you know, well, and, 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 and yeah, you're you're articulating. You know, you've said two important things. You're overwhelmed, and time is too short. That's the bottom line. You know, the people that have normalcy bias. Look, you can tell them things are going. It won't affect them until it's them. How about five million people without power? How about West Virginia? I think it's in West Virginia, and yeah. I, I, I stand to be corrected, but somebody who lives in West Virginia said that the power companies now are shutting off the water because they can't charge the customers for it without electricity, so now they don't have electricity or water. I would say this. Those people in West Virginia should, in, uh, I'm serious, as soon as the power comes on, they should have a recall petition. They should fire the mayor. They should fire whoever the water works guy is. They should fire their city or county commissioners. And they should get people who say, you do not cut a life staple off to people when their lives are miserable. I would say this. Understand what King David did. When people are starving, hey, the treasury of the Lord and the priesthood had a repository of wheat. I'm with David. You rob the repository and you feed God's people. It's like it's like people are absolutely in such a state of denial, and they have so lack of compassion. This is why you're seeing the murders, the butchery, the the cannibalism, the freaking out, the freaks. You're seeing it all because of the lack. Listen, when you tell Jesus to get out of our country. When you tell Jesus, we don't want your name. When you tell Jesus, and when Jesus says, I'm, I'm, I'm not wanted, I'm not welcome, okay, I'll just pull back. I'll just pull out. 
We're left to our own devices. It has been God's mercy. And I can just say this again to the critics of that. Every atheist, every disgusting pervert, you've chosen to go to hell. You've chosen to deny the living God. But how dare you rob your fellow countrymen of their life? How dare you sentence your children to, to a future of poverty at the at the uh, worst and and perpetual slavery at the best you know see doug it's because people will take anything that's thrown their way because of normalcy bias they no longer have the will to fight because the will to fight has been gone i'll just tell you this too guess what as the one who broke the chemtrail story i even said this years ago i said global warming gee what a neat way to entrap all the uh earth's temperature whether it's volcanic geothermal methane whatever by setting up if you will, kind of a roaster pan instead of alu- using aluminum foil. Why do you put aluminum foil over a turkey, okay? Well, because you want to keep the heat in to baste it. Oh, gee, global warming. Oh, gee, chemtrails. Go to hell, scientists that have lied. Go straight to hell. Mm. No. And I'm going to back up a little bit, Steve. I have two firsthand reports, one from family uh, and one from uh, a close friend in West Virginia uh, my family didn't even go to work today. They work at a casino. There's no water. They haven't showered. It's 95 degrees down there. Uh, another person said they drove from West Virginia into Pennsylvania, and half the state or more had no power also. And my family's not prepared. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. And so this is happening. We also received many emails. And the people are not prepared. And maybe this can be a short uh, uh, suffering for them that they can wake up and see the the importance of being prepared and, and maybe it can open the horizons of, of people. But I see this as being trouble because they say the, the power companies won't, you know, have the power back on until Wednesday, maybe even uh, a couple of days later. Yeah, yeah I ask you guys this. Have you, have you thought about this, Doug, with your investigative mind? By cutting off the power and cutting off the water, uh, and doing that, you've got people's focus on everything other than what maybe they would have been watching had the power and water stayed on. You never use, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. You always move men and materials under wartime during the worst of conditions because people are too consumed with their habits to notice what's going on. I, I hope, Joe, we have some time to come back. And I'm not saying everything's coming down next week. I'll tell you this, though. July is is going to set all precedents for getting really bad. Really bad, obviously, if you've got a job and you've got your 401K. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you might like to know this. 401Ks go bye-bye, sayonara, avita zane after the first of the year. And if you want to take money out of the country, 30% surcharge if you're allowed to leave the country. And, oh, by the way, all those reports of FEMA camps and military roadblocks, Every day, more of them. Oh, and all the way, all the helicopters that we were all mocked over, black helicopters, now they land on banks in broad daylight in Chicago. And guess what? I, I almost wish they'd paint them pink, you know. But the point is, I know, yeah, then they could celebrate their National Pink Helicopter Day. Uh, rainbow color for, uh, uh, you know, uh, never mind. Go on. Yep, yep. Uh, so here we're at. Here we're at, Joe. And this is what we've all got to ask ourselves. I will, um, well, I guess I shouldn't say this. I would like to never have to answer another critic. I would like to never have to basically deal with it. But when you have, look, here's the deal. If someone wants to choose to not prepare, okay, and don't you wish, I can tell you this, my emails filled up with people said, oh, I wish I would have listened to you. Oh, I've been listening to you, but I thought you were such a fear monger. Okay, well, guess what? Now you're living in the world I warned you about. See, again, I want, to go, I want to make a statement. This isn't mine. It's courtesy of the Lord. I think he gave it to me to settle me down because, quite candidly, uh, you know, uh, it's tough sometimes to forgive, especially your critics when they are working for certain agencies and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll just leave it at that. But, and, and I challenge anybody to prove me wrong through the Word of God in this because it's right out of the Word of God based on Jesus said, which of, your, which, of, uh, which of the prophets have your fathers not killed? Now, remember, these are Abraham's seeds that are whacking the prophets, okay? So mm. he said, no word of God spoken by any man of God to the people of God at any time in history have the people of God ever received the word of God spoken by a man of God. My definition of a man wow. of God isn't moral. 
It isn't being abrasive. Somebody called me a fake Christian because I'm not kind. Kind? I said, so tell me what you've ever done with your life, you know? And I do get defensive, okay? Because, look, the point is is that we are uh, we're running on, on, on empty, like uh, that Jackson Brown song, okay? Running on empty. I heard it the other day, and, Doug, it just said, Lord, that's a pretty good way. And I'm not saying that's an inspired song. I'm just saying we're running on empty. You know this. When you're running on empty, you've got a little motion, but the time comes when the bloody vehicle stops, right? Absolutely. And when the bloody vehicle stops, you can wish you had more gas. You can try and convince yourself, well, I know there should be another 20 gallons there because, of course, the fuel tank is broken. Most people will explain everything away other than the single most important thing. Why didn't you have some extra water on hand when you could? Why didn't you have some extra food on hand when you could? Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, it's going to get difficult through the month after July to get long-term storage food. Please, please go to my website and take yourself a veil. Doug, a lot of people since I've been on you, uh, on your show with you guys, they've been calling Dry Harvest. They've been calling us. We're down to, I think, as of Friday, 34 uh, boxes of chili with beans. And we've got a couple hundred boxes of chili without beans, but it seems like the mobility. But, see, that that was an introductory offer. I get a call from the guy that I buy it from, the Frederick Remington people, and I say, oh, and by the way, Steve, no, let me fill in the blank. Prices are going up, right? Well, I know the prices are going up because of corn farmers, and somebody sent me an email saying, Frank, you've got the corn farmers in, in uh, southern Indiana got some rain. But the point is, is that it's through the food system. It's becoming harder and harder. And you know what everybody wants that America had? They don't, I mean, they've already stolen our technology or had the, uh, you know, different administrations give it to them, but they want the one thing they don't have. They don't have the ability to feed themselves. Russia can't do it, and neither can China. And guess what? When you read the Chinese white papers, the Chinese general, I'd shake his hand, I'd sit down and buy him a steak dinner because he told the truth. He said... We have 1.2 billion. America has 300 million. If it's necessary to keep 600 million or 900 million Chinese alive, we'll take their food. We'll take their farmland, and because we can lose 300 million, and we've got three fourths of our population yet left. They lose 300 million. Me in the United States, they got nothing left. Okay, and you guys, I think Roberts gave a signal to everyone when he was talking about, you know, the the Malta underground cave and stuff. Unless you understand the world of esoteric Luciferianism, okay, you wouldn't understand what he meant. I believe he was telling everyone that it's time to go to their ritual spots. Ritual spots may mean a place that they all go and, you know, conjure up whatever demon they haven't conjured up before or the, the latest uh, role, or they just may have headed underground. Because the, and this is a critical thing for people to understand, for the first time in history, NASA's taking off all of its solar feeds. They're blaming it on a power outage. Isn't it interesting that the power outage happens when something may be going on in the sun that they didn't want anybody to know about because people could put two and two together? Remember, here is it. They are of their father, the devil. There is no truth in them talking about the Luciferians. So then how is it, Doug and, and, and Joe, seriously, how is it if that's true and the main networks are owned by the largest Illuminati conglomerates in the world, how is it that anyone has the expectation of truth from them? And if they believe they don't tell them the truth, then why are they listening or watching that and then challenging us to say, well, you guys don't, you can't be telling the truth because our Fox hasn't picked it up, you know? Yeah, it, it, no, I, look, I agree. That kind of mindset is just so far gone for me. Uh, people in my life I've disconnected from, and I see an increase in the people that stay connected to me. They're doing the same thing I am, uh, you know, reading the Bible. They're increasing their knowledge. They're helping people, and that's what's important. And the lack of self-reliance <clears throat> in this country. We have been, uh, through Agenda 21 and programs like it, have been colonialized into small areas with huge populations, which is uh, incompatible with self-reliance, growing your own food, having a farm, and we don't even realize it. You know how many, uh, half the population lives near the coast and could be, you know, taken out by any, um, any kind of natural disaster, attack. Uh, these people are not self-reliant. Most people in America are not self-reliant. And no, I think it's a, it's a important point we see what's happening 
in Washington, in West Virginia, in that area. They were hit by a severe storm. They might not have power for another week, and they're going to get desperate. It's you know They complain for the first few days. They get angry the next couple of days, and they riot after that. Well, Steve, so, well, well, let me ask this. Steve, do you see anything supernatural? I, and, and I mean this in, in the truest, most um, uh, literal sense, supernatural with these storms here, or is this man-made, or, or what do you see? Like, I mean... You mean what part of it's God's judgment versus the Illuminati's trying to pretend to be God? Thank you, yes. Yes. Well, I, I think it's both. First of all, the Bible teaches that God takes the wicked in their own devices, okay? And device is an interesting word because most people don't understand what that word means in Hebrew. Look it up. But I think it's a combination of both, okay? And how I, why I'm saying that and, and as an example of that, okay, weather warfare and weather modification, obviously God uses certain laws that he created that he abides by. Obviously, if he didn't, gravity would not be and everything would come apart at uh, the speed of light. But by using man, he uses fallen men and that which they are seeking to... Again, I know this is going to sound strange to you, but the fallen angels and all their angelic civilizations that were judged in antiquity thought they could make war on God, okay? Mm. And, and, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels. So there's a supernatural element behind everything. Okay, as I'm talking to you right now, Doug... We have a we have a severe weather alert out. I'm watching the lightning, you know. And when I was going to send you, listen to this. I'm I'm, I'm on my computer. I'm not trying to make anything big. The lightning's probably uh, 20 miles off to the west right now. But when I tried to send you an article on zombies in China, my screen went totally dead. Someone took control of it, and I'm not kidding. I know the difference. Okay. So it was sure. interesting. The, the gist of it is is now they're having zombie outbreaks in China. Yeah, Remember, I, the I Illuminati the is room. transnational. The transnational Illuminati is ready to toast the most of the world's population. In their world of uh, numerical equivalence, 500 million people, you can divide the whole planet up and plenty can have plenty more than they got now. The problem with that is, is even if somebody's got 100, I know there's five more, they won't leave the guy with five alone. They want the 105. So when you ask me, is it supernatural, it's a combination of both. God will literally rain fire down on the Russians when they attack Israel, even though at the beginning it's going to look like the Russians are winning. You cannot, isn't it interesting that nobody can explain, even those who hate Israel or hate the Jews or hate this or hate me. It's amazing. The central theme in all of this is they got to hate, okay? But they can't explain how all the world's armies, even now, 90,000 Russians, and Chinese in uh, Syria never happened before, and all of the Saudi Arabian military on the move. I don't know if you've seen those photos of the columns moving. I mean, yep. everything's in motion, okay? And gee, hey, there's a place no called uh, Armageddon, which we get the word Armageddon, okay? This will not be the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon is air. when Jesus himself returns to take on the devil and his angels and all of their cohorts, or earthly cohorts. But what's coming up is a Gog-Magog war, do people argue about it, or a false World War III. I read, I read the uh, statement by Albert Pike on your show last week, and the Third World War has already been planned, plotted, schemed, and funded. And the, guess what? The good news is they get rid of a whole lot of people. And that's why my heart breaks for every, every uh, man or woman who's lost a daughter or a son in the war. And because it, when you understand, and here's what I, I really want to share with you, the plan, the plan is to leave every American fighting man landlocked in the Middle East or wherever they're signed around the world. They don't get to come back. These men are devils. They will use them up. They will use them up until their their uh, uh, usefulness is exceeded, and then they will terminate them. So I can tell you, those of you who We're have there. Uh, kids in the military, this is the plan. Even the even the shills, even Ahmadinejad has made that statement. If you uh, launch on us in Iran, there's not one military base in the Middle East in which you have U.S. soldiers that won't be attacked. You know what the sad news is? 
Our military knows this, but everybody is being trained as you got to go kill those, quote, veterans. you got to go kill those homeschoolers. you got to go kill those uh, constitutions and, by all means, slaughter the gun owners, you know. And, and you guys, I get, I get accused of making this stuff up. You know, when people have, uh, let's just say this, had to walk in my moccasins or drive in my vehicles or deal with some of the people I've had to deal with or to hear secondhand of what's happened to some of the people and then know that people have laid their lives down for me because they believe that I was telling the people the truth. And I don't know how you'd take that, Doug, if someone laid down their life for you and you knew that you knew that you knew because you talked to them when they were alive and now they're dead that they would lay your life down. I know that's the military creed. I'm not in the military, but I'll tell you what, you know, I don't, and then you think of an earthly man will do that. I am, by the grace of God, and I'm saying, Lord, you gave your life for me. I didn't give my life for you. And I want to live thank you, not say thank you. I want to live give. In other words, I want to give, and, and I mean, and, and I live to give. And somebody said, once you live to give, you start to give to live. And when you give to live, God starts fueling that cycle, and it's a blessing cycle. And listen, this isn't a, a plea for money. All I'm asking people to do is don't turn your back on a veteran who says, veteran, homeless, hungry. So what if he buys a beer? I only make them say, you know, I, usually they're in a shopping center. I said, I'll do this if you promise me one thing. Go buy yourself a meal. You need a pair of shoes? Let's go get you some shoes. Do you need? What do you need? Because, again, God supplies all my needs by his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I understand there's scammers out there. Look, I've been scammed by, by brethren who have faked being brethren. You know, I, I know what it's like. But the point is, is I'd rather, you know, one smile. And, unfortunately, I wish I could take care of everybody's smile. I had a friend, and he's listening to the program tonight. And and the man's teeth were rotted out. This was a veteran, okay? Michael, God bless you. And I I felt impressed with the Lord. I said, You need you need your you need your teeth, you gotta get dentures. And he was having health issues and everything. The gist of the story is God let me buy the man a new mouth and I gotta tell you something, when he got his new teeth, that may seem so insignificant, he had the most glorious smile and all he cared about was the children. This man, at one point in his life, it's safe to say, one of the deadliest men that ever lived. And yet, you know what? A new smile and his concern for children, I thought, there's a man whose heart has been touched by Jesus. And so, Doug, here's what it's all about. It's all about showing, well, we have yet time to show. It's about showing that Jesus is real, his power is real, and that he's the one that changes a man from the inside out. Hey, look, nothing external could have changed me. I was incorrigible. Some people probably think I still am. But I'm not what I used to be, and that's what I trust. I trust in not my ability to change my own life. I trust in God's supernatural ability to change me as I bring about repentance and, 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 and run from my wicked ways, okay? And that's all I know. That's what the gospel is. God said to me, though, your sin be a scarlet. I said, Lord, we're talking like deep scarlet. You've heard of deep purple? I'm deep scarlet. And I said, yeah, but I'll take you up on it, Jesus. If you'll forgive me, only you could forgive me, and only the real God could forgive me, because I had a sense of my own, uh, let's just say this, level of debauchery. Yeah, you know, humans are, are limited in terms of forgiveness and abilities and what have you, and, and we had... Uh, I mean, we're only fooling ourselves if we can think we can do it ourselves. Yep, brother, I I can't do it. Every day I say, Lord, help me. I don't have within my power to do this, you know? No. I'm trying to help people, and all they want to do is kill themselves. I don't know what to do. No, you know, you know what, Steve? I mean, look, you know, it, it's it's amazing how you help people. I've got people that send me emails saying, please, Thanks, Steve. I, you know, I need to. I need to thank him. I, I must have gotten five or six e um, emails to, uh, tonight, and, and people wanting to right. say thank you for the, for things well, you've done. Well, can I tell you something, Doug? Here's my response to everybody. A man, and a, this is not false anything. This is my heart. I have nothing that I did not receive from heaven so freely, and God has always been the standard and hallmark. And I just say this: when you thank Jesus. You are absolutely bringing a smile to my face. 
because without his redemption, I could not respond. And I've got some amazing people. I've got Cornelius II. I've got uh, uh, J.D. and, and, and uh, uh, I've got two J.D.s. Their names are both. I have people that have, have cared for literally and fed literally homeless people across the country. Uh, and, and, and the people that have stood with me have been amazing. I have people that one brother just sent me $4,000 and said, use it this way. And, and he had no way of knowing at the time he wrote that check that the very day, with the same day that his check came in, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a carousel. The money goes in, comes in, but the money goes out, you know. <laughs> and one guy, one guy wanted to bless you. So the point is, is that what I think is amazing. Okay, I think that the the hallmark to the very nature of God is for God so loved the world that He gave. He didn't loan. He didn't barter. He gave. And that's why the Bible says that God's gifts and callings are without repentance. Simply this. Can I mess up and sin? Absolutely. Do I mess up and sin? Oh, yeah. But the part is, is when I do sin, it breaks my heart. Because I'm saying to the one who loved me, I'm saying, Jesus... I, I, you know, it just does. I'm saying I did it again, and I say, but I praise you, Lord, that the day comes when I won't have to do it. That's why I'm just saying to everybody tonight, look, World War III is here, and just because of mushroom, I got, I got a guy that sends me emails. No more, he's blocked. Well, I don't believe World War III is, uh, is when the mushroom clouds in my rearview mirror. I said, well, since you're looking back, you might as well bend over and kiss your behind goodbye then. I said, because that's the wrong way to be looking. If World War III is on your tail, you need to be looking towards the Redeemer. And I'm sorry, some people find that crude. Can I tell you something, Doug? I am not trying to be crude. I am trying to shake the people. Even the scripture says, shake yourselves. You know what that means? It says, wake up. Get, quit being a, a, a dead, you know? Steve, look, I, 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 we've got a couple of people here that are asking this, and I, and I want to just ask you this. This being late in the game, we know where we are financially we know where we are militarily basically with the uh with the arab spring and, and the arab spring is is nothing but an islamic winter or a, a, you know the it, it's a hideous it's a hideous thing that people are rejoicing in we've got uh we've got the, the, such debauchery in the in the country uh, you, you know you you mentioned about roberts that was a very disjointed opinion and and we've got now conservatives small c conservatives attempting to spin this as a win uh for for the constitution which is it's anything but you mentioned about uh roberts uh, reference to to uh malta all of this I, I but i got people asking me plainly Steve, how do you see this coming down? I mean, how you know? How do you? Well, see? can I say that? I, I guess, boy, am I a, a pathetic communicator? It's coming down. The forests are on fire. The reason it started in Colorado because Denver becomes a provisional capital of the United States once D.C. is toast. Now, why would I think D.C. might be toast? Well, gee, there's no power, and everybody fled D.C. after the historic uh, Obamacare decision, didn't they? Yes. They remember, that even weeks before that, the entire Supreme Court will be out of the country for the first time, blah, blah, blah. It's coming down. It's in play. Doug, let me, I, I don't know how to make it any clearer. When I said, uh, based on V's information to me, that that the banks are – well, forgive me. I, someone else told me that, and then V just doubled it. Remember on the front of Drudge uh, at the beginning of the week, they said $75 million disappears from accounts, but they, and the mainstream press was given the most uh, lackluster explanation and just totally dumbass statements, okay? Yep, yep, yep. And and the th and by the way, dumbass literally means a dumb ass. Okay, it's a biblical term. You know, I'd like right. to call them lying devil whores from hell. Maybe that would make more people happy. But the point is, is that they didn't get it. Then the either the, uh, I think it was the Times and also the the uh, Telegraph of London carried the story. It was 2.5 billion. So my friend D goes out to his 
friend who developed the entire anti-money laundering software, and the guy is the smartest one of the, well, forgive me, I would say V didn't say, but he's probably one of the two smartest men in the world in that realm, and the guy says, he's to, to, to V, he says, V, they, they hit at least 100 banks, if not 200 banks worldwide, and it had to be an inside job. Well, I'll give you three-letter guesses as oh, the only people that can bust that. Every software program by design has a an intelligence agency backdoor. And and B specifically asked him, was this a Russian mafia? He said it could only be handled at the initiating point and where all the servers go to. And gee, guess where that is, you know? Uh -huh. I won't spell it out for people, but here's what, uh, what imagine people saying, well, we know this, we know this. Are you physically at this point prepared for when you're – Bank account is zeroed, emptied overnight. You agree, like tonight is Sunday. Let's say it was Friday or even tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday, whatever night. Are you physically prepared to have everything you have in the bank wiped out and then have it blamed on a cyber attack? Because what's going on is Dan Hawk brought this point up to me on the phone earlier. He said, Steve, the bank robberies that took place in uh, Muncie, Indiana, he said, how convenient, how convenient that, uh, you know, they would take place during this time with all the storms and everything and then that there were SWAT teams out and supposedly military guys out too and I have a friend there in law enforcement who told me it was bank robberies but what I'm trying to say in all this is uh, keep in mind fear and mayhem do you think the people who are sitting one ridge away from the fires burning their neighbors homes to the ground don't have a little bit of fear do you oh, think yeah. the person that's worked all their life hoping to just have a, a small retirement is a little afraid knowing that the banks would give them a quarter percent on under a hundred K and one percent on a hundred K you know, oh, okay. and then tell me they're good stewards and I'm not. If I tell people to put 100k in silver at this level, and last year when silver was at this level, it rose to 50 bucks. So your 100k becomes close to 200k, 175,000. So the point is, is that what I'm trying to get people to recognize is the fact that the advice I've tried to give it's for their benefit. So I always love it, and you've heard me say my chief complaint is no, nothing's become experts on everything they've never written a book they've never done their research yet somehow i'm the dumb you know what they usually follow it up with the sh word or i'm the lying devil or whatever and and this isn't being defensive or that hawk is just you know uh, pulling people's chains and why do they try and kill him why is he and I knocked off the radio more than anybody? Why is our friend who, 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 who is one of the major Cold War warriors who gets a public praise from one of America's top four-star generals for his work and service to his community, and they, why do they try and whack him this weekend and his wife, okay? You see, Doug, that makes me crazy. People who have nothing in the game, who do nothing for anybody except whine, well, everything's normal for me. There is no one, and I'm sorry, this is my issue I'm working on with the Lord, but there is no one I hold in higher contempt than those people that ask that question. Okay. No. I, I think people were looking for the, the level of specificity that, that only uh, God can you know provide. In, in, in. Right. And, 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 and that's the answer, okay? Can I tell you something? I got to go to the same person they got to go to, and his name is Jesus. How do we start these out? Why do I keep bringing it back to Jesus? Because I'm not God. He is the only... Listen, my life is so complicated that all I can say is every time I've tried to fix it, I've screwed it up, okay? When I turn it over to Jesus, he gets it done. Like Bob Mumford said years ago, the problem with us trying to crucify the flesh is we use a rubber hammer. Oh, gosh. In other words, we can't do it. It's a grace of God. Your human will cannot get you out of the predicament you're in because it's a spiritual issue 99% of the time. Well, the know, reason why Christians yeah. are, are frightened to death of demons and deliverance is because they don't know that they've been given power over them. The reason why they run from them is because they don't want the responsibility of having to deal with them. Well, you know, yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, and, and again, talking about the, the level of specificity that I mentioned earlier, I know that you had shared information with me through your sources that, for example, and I'm using this as one example, the euro, the euro basically is dead. It's it's dead. It's on, I mean, 
you know it were it it's it, it's dead our entire economic system global economic system is dead um it's not it cannot be revived it, it, you know so when you say and and this is what people i believe people have to understand when you say that they're going to wake up one morning and their 401k's or with their bank accounts are going to be nil and there's nothing going to be in it you know um, that's you know at, at that point. I mean, I I, I I guess I don't know. People can't understand. I mean, I see people still walking out of the big box stores with with big screen TVs. They have no clue as to what's going on. Uh, Can I people, tell you something? When life is good for you, it's good. Oh, it yeah. doesn't matter if it's bad for everybody else. It's good for you. Well, but it, it, when life is not good for you, then it's miserable for everyone because, see, we inflect and inject our personal uh, situation into the uh, lives of others. Right, and that, that goes back to the normalcy bias. Now, but, but, but now people are saying, well, the stock market is up. The gas prices are down. Boy, isn't it great that, that the gas prices are going to continue to go down. But, but, but I guess people don't understand that could change in, 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 in an instant, in, in a blink of an eye. And it most well, likely will. Yeah, take the stock market. Why is it up? There, uh, there's a story I'll post on my website. 74% of J.P. Morgan, the lead manipulator in the silver market, in the derivatives market, in the SLV and GLD, guess who with the, the story headline is? 74% of J.P. Morgan's profits come from the U.S. government. Somebody once said, J.P. Morgan is nothing more than the U.S. government. Well, that, that's true. And, I mean, so, no, so what that means, Doug, what that means to the person that isn't versed in that is, is that the the and I, I don't know how to make this clear. The stock market is trading sometimes fifty six thousand trades a second with high frequency trading. The people buying and the selling of the stocks are in the uh, different offices in the same building. They're adding zeros and subtracting. Let me tell you a real story from the real world. I have a friend, a great friend, who's become a friend. He's a client. He tried to wire money out of his brokerage firm from uh, a Mississippi firm on uh, Monday. They told him they'd wired it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Finally, you know, he had to get the law authorities to go in there, U.S. Marshals, to get his money. And this is the same thing that V said. V didn't name his brokerage firm, but V said, Steve, so many, if not the majority, of brokerage firms are broke because they lost so much money on being on the wrong side of trades. Let me explain how this works. When a brokerage firm enters an order, that's a computer entry. When the algorithms that have been designed by computer geniuses, they know how to offset every single trade because they're seeing them ahead of the market. That's called manipulation, fraud, grand theft, everything else you can say, and immoral. But the point that Americans can't understand is the 255, 275 Dow has absolutely no impact or effect on them. It's a random number debased and totally aloof from reality that's being used as the uh, hypnotist amulet to uh, basically keep you in a state of dependency upon the system. You hear nothing but the sound of my voice. I'm going to make sure I don't hypnotize him. You see nothing but the sign or the the flowing amulet. From this point forward, you know, blah, 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 blah. I better just do it that way. And the point is, is that this is why the people send that email. So will they take the time to say, wait a minute, 74%? Well, who's buying all the treasury debt? Well, another division of the treasury. Or, uh, hmm, international bankers who are getting trillions are loaning billions, and it all comes back. Okay, so now you've got the mantra of the, uh, of the uh, madness crowd, meaning the mainstream media, saying, well, you know, central bankers do run the world. I said that 20 years ago. I was a conspiracy nut. John Bircher said it 50 years ago, and they were conspiracy nuts. Oh, and Joe McCarthy, basically, when he was saying, hey, there are a lot of communists in, uh, in, in uh, Hollywood. Gee, would it come as a surprise to the majority of uh, people funding uh, the Marxist-slash-communist takeover of America politics come from the entertainment? Oh, I guess that just is an irrelevant statement because all those crazy right-wing fanatics, you know? Mm. Point being, Doug, 
is, is that we are at a point of no return. See, that's what I'm trying to tell. If I could get one point. So what do you do? When you can't return, you have to then decide that you've got to commit yourself to go forward. And it's scary going forward into the times ahead. That's why we have to commit ourselves and our ways unto the Lord and seek him. Lord, where do I go? Do I turn right? Do I turn left? And I'm not trying to be corny or hyper-spiritual. I'm just trying to say that the way that is right for me, a man does not lie within me. In other words, I make the wrong decisions. I have the wrong motives. I want one thing, I think, in my heart, and then my head says another, and therein lies confusion. God has the ability to bring it all together into a central focus point and get our attention and then point us in the right direction, but also give us the power to walk there under our own uh, uh, motion capabilities. Okay. I, I get that. I, I mean, I do get that. Joe, can, can no, you uh, – go ahead. No, uh, Steve, you're making excellent points. You're on a roll. Uh, what you're saying is so accurate. Um, we have about 17, 16 minutes left. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier and I've been paying attention to. Fukushima, reactor number one and reactor number four. Uh, about a week ago, I saw reports of reactor number four being taken apart. I'm not sure I didn't get a lot of news after that, but I know there's problems now with the restarting uh the power and the losing the loss of the cooling systems at number four. Is that still uh have they not got power to the reactor on number four? Do you have that information? Because they're all lying, Joe, I will tell you what's concerning to me, okay? When they're saying that it's uh uh you know, ten uh uh rats and they just say 10 RADs, R-A-D-S, or 10 REMs, usually those are measured per minute, okay? So if they're talking per minute, see, they're not giving the duration. In, in a radiation monitor, you have to know two things. You have to know your intensity of radiation, and you have to know over what period of time, okay? That's like a dosimeter just means a dose meter. That's what you usually see an X-ray technician wearing. They can be digital. They can be a film. They used to be film, and the more fog in the film uh, indicated the more radiation exposure, blah, blah, blah. But the point is is that with the readings that are coming out of there, it's real simple. If it is in minutes, which it has to be because that's the international standard and norm, then we're talking, you know, we're talking lethal dose in 20 minutes. That's huge radiation. You can't even compare it to Chernobyl, okay? And if the both reactors go, here's what I'm telling you. It will be impossible to fly transoceanic, especially into Asia, and avoid the radiation. If Fukushima 1 and 4 go, and I'm telling you, I've had it on good authority, they are going to evacuate Tokyo. They will do it lock, stock, and barrel, and it will be the key hallmark, in my opinion, to giving everyone their time zone. I don't know if that gives two weeks forward, but once they evacuate Tokyo, you want to be in the financial markets based on the yen, based on any uh, mutual, uh, oh, good night, IOUs between the Bank of Japan and, and uh, Sumitomo, those are two very big banks, and anybody else they have co- corollary or trading agreements with, I don't think so. No. I, 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 well, uh, sorry for stuttering, but where, where do you evacuate Tokyo to? Seriously. Well, I, you know, there, and I'm one of the people that believe the Chinese cities those cities that were built in no place. Now, if they were built in anticipation of this, then that means obviously it was a man-caused deal. Uh, you know, the point is I maintain that Fukushima was an Illuminati attack on Japan, and you could see there's videos on YouTube watching neutron beams. If you don't understand what neutron flux is, F-L-U-X, uh, go look it up, N-E-U-T-R-O-N flux, Okay. And basically, uh, neutrons are not good things when you introduce them into certain forms of radioactive cores. There's actually a YouTube video, Joe, have you seen that, where seven uh, distinguishable beams are going into the reactor. And they're coming uh, down from the sky into the reactor, not emanating out of the ground up into the sky. Yeah, that See, was here's the thing. The first Men who do not understand the supernatural world cannot understand supernatural evil. They're trying to explain physical evil and supernatural evil with a denial of the supernatural and trying to fit non-categorical results into their wrong equation. Garbage in, garbage out. Assumption in, assumption out. 
you know? That's a good way of saying it. And, and I was stuck in that. I look, admittedly, I was stuck in that uh, in that, that routine myself. And I've got to say that you, Steve, have been solely responsible for getting me out of that. So I want to thank you for that. But uh, uh, the, uh, somebody asked me a question about this, and i got to ask you this. Why are we not hearing anything more about the Gulf uh, Gulf disaster? Uh, that's still going on, is it not? The uh... yeah, I have an answer for you because the biggest money in the world, some of the most outspoken critics, and someone can correct me on this, but I believe twenty four. I believe we're up to twenty four now of the most outspoken critics have all met untimely death. Really? Okay. Big I, money I've... buys, and I'll, I'll tell you another quailism. Okay. Big money buys all the silence you can imagine. Oh, that's true. That that, that that's. I mean, we yeah, see who, that. And we now, see that I'll put the question back on the person who asked it. Who do you expect to hear the truth from? Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, I can tell we, you this: that the mutagenic natures and properties of the shrimp. I don't know if you saw the article last week, but they were showing how much, how, not how much, but the toxic level of saturation in the shrimp in the Gulf. Did you see that? I, I did, I did, and, and <laughs> well, again, you know, no one is talking about this, and 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 I will say this: without the so-called alternative media like ours, uh, the truth would be forever silenced. So, I, I right. Mean, and so, why would God raise it up? Because God is true. See, most people think truth is a process. Truth is a person. By the very foundations of the world, Colossians, my favorite, one of my, well, everything's my favorite, but tonight my favorite, Colossians, the second chapter, is an amazing chapter because it talks about all things that are existing, that we see existing, exist, and consist by the very power of the living God, Jesus. Listen, no place in, in the Bahava Gita did Buddha create the world, you know? Exactly. Now, uh, and, and so so the point is is that that the 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 here's the tragedy, okay? And I asked the Lord this, and I don't have an answer, okay? But this is just, I mean, there are perplexing things to me right now. And obviously, we know about seduction, we know about deception, we know about the ability to uh, fake and, and to protect. But I said, Lord, why is it that? And I said, you said your people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is it that they choose to reject it for, okay? And I believe the Lord gave me the answer, because they don't realize they will be brought before his throne for accountability, okay? And if they took responsibility, it might move them out of their comfort zone, okay? So, and I believe that's the case, because that's what your emails that were asking me, you know. And, and look, that's I have true. passion about this. I'm about saving people's lives, and I'm about helping the people I can help. I, I, I wish I could write the checks I need to write every day. I can only write what I've got the ability to write on a given day. But I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, when you touch someone's life with an act of mercy, an act of care, an act of, of just saying, enough is enough, I'm going to make a difference in your life, you know, uh, everything changes. You've changed an outcome in history. See, that's what people don't understand. How do you know the vet that you don't help today is the guy that saves your life tomorrow? Uh, it's kind of like the butterfly effect in a way. But I, I yeah, mean, and then, then that, that's a good way. That's the way scientists explain it, okay? My answer to that is who created the butterfly. You follow uh, me? <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that, that that's a good comeback. I Wow. Okay. Um, what is? We got, go we ahead. We got about ten minutes left in the show. Um, I, I just want to stress this a little bit. Uh, we see that the Washington area, West Virginia, is is no electricity. They can't get gas. There's no services. Uh, people are saying, you know, if you have money, you'll be okay. Well, if money's not going to work when there's no services provided, yeah. I, 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 how are you going to buy gas if you if they can't, if you can't pump it out of the ground? Right. We see, well, the uh, answer no to that water. is you, yeah, you store it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You store it, and and you bet you get some stuff called P R I G, prig, which is uh, a fuel additive. It's better than stable. Okay. And 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 the other thing is is that you, look, you anticipate that day and you prepare for it. Hey, Doug, no one should ever be at a service station trying to fill up when there's no gas to fill up with. They should have already anticipated that. They should already have anticipated. Look, I'm getting emails right now of people saying there's no food, their trucks aren't in, be the weather's bad, the power's out, no trucks are stocking. You see, this is what I'm trying to tell people. The Bible gives us a specific instance of 
Esau selling his birthright to Jacob because he got hungry. And what did Jacob do? Jacob's name means supplanter until God changed Jacob's name to Israel, okay? Israel is a person before it was a nation, just for everybody's, you know, historic accuracy. Indeed. And so so, so the, the, point, the point I'm making about that, do you understand this is what they're going to do? They, yep. the Illuminati, the Luciferians, the powers that be, are going to starve you into submission. Yeah, and we and we covered that way back when. Look, uh, right. it's a heck of a lot easier to, to get these people to go to these camps when uh, there's food there and there's no food in their pantry. So I know. Well, and can I tell you something? Term. I'm about kids too. Okay, that's and I make this statement: single moms. I also help single dads because single dads are have a tough hoe or a tough road to hoe, especially because they're not usually a motherly figure and that the, they've got to maintain jobs and everything. So we help single dads who are having a difficult time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give out my phone number. I'm getting emails, Doug. Tomorrow you can call on my store after 9 o'clock, 406-586-4840, 406-586-4840. That's Renaissance Precious Metals, or you can go, and, and, and that's where you order the bison. Or you can go on Dry Harvest website, click on that number, contact them. And for those of you that can, remember this. The protein will go the first. Doug, when I was in a helicopter flying over the most, uh, some of the most amazing land in Montana, where the grass should have been 8 to 12 inches high, the farmers are already stressing because they're going to have to buy hay. I can promise you this. It probably was not any higher than 2 to 3 inches. It was so dry that the land looked like it was late August instead of the end of June. Normally, June in Montana has would be a typical total rain month going into maybe the first two weeks in July. It's this is this is happening. They're starving people into submission. Please, ladies and gentlemen, you can call Dry Harvest. Take advantage of their platinum package. I tell everybody this. I, I look. I'm, I'm, I live in this world. I hear people complaining. Well, they just called so and so in the four weeks to eight weeks out. Well, call Dry Harvest and ask them how fast they can get it to you. I don't think they're that, I think they're pretty quick, you know, like one, yeah. one week, ship the next. And, and But they, they won't, they, nobody can stay when there's a panic, because here's what's happening. Every food canner, every food uh, 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 formulator, putting A and B together and making C, everybody has to get raw materials. Trucking strikes, stop the raw materials transportation you know and and this is why i'm just i'm just going absolutely overboard to force the issue what happens when someone can no longer eat on their own they have to be force fed either by ivs okay intravenous or they have to basically have some way of getting nutrition into their system and obviously if they're unconscious it's an iv what i want you to have though is i want you to have fv that's full full view of how dire it's getting I'm not the one saying it's getting dire. It's these people. I report it, and people say, well, you're making this up. No, I'm not making it up. Go look it up. You know what? People who are too bloody lazy to look it up always claim that those who have done their homework are making it up. Exactly. And people accuse you, hey, you just want to sell chili. That's all you want to do. You know, and, and it, it sickens me. And I'm telling people they're not going to be chilly too longer, and it's going to get real hot. And you might, and I'm not, now I'll take look. my chance. Uh, you know, the point is this, is that I have always been ahead of the curve. My uh, critics, they can just go choke on their own vomit. I'm serious, because they absolutely do not see the lateness of the hour, and most of them are paid critics. Most of them are paid character assassinations. And the point being is this. I'm not asking anybody. Doug, my, from the very first show I ever did on talk radio in Johnstown, Colorado, I said, take everything I say or anybody else's, take it to the Lord. And exactly. if you don't know Jesus, then ask him into your heart, because he's the only one. Like, people sometimes give me impossible questions to ask, and my answer, is simple, or to answer, my answer back to them is, you need to ask God. I'm not him. That's a God question. By the way, I don't even compare myself. I'm just a kid who's redeemed. I, I love the fact that my Redeemer lives. I love the fact that God has sent his angels in the highways and byways compelling people to come in, and I pray, literally, for the day that men's hearts, the scale 
scales. I tell people, by the way, Doug, men have two sets of scales. They have them on their eyes that blind them and on their hearts that weigh yes or no. It's funny because women, and women typically, especially when it comes to prep and when it comes to finance, do way better than most of my male clients. I'd say it's like three to one because they know in their heart of hearts they're they're intuitive where men you know they got to grunt and groan and try and you know uh uh not all of them but but i got to tell you i mean a lot of them that do then there are the exceptions guys like my buddy in mississippi that man knows exactly what he wants and he goes for it and, and there's so many wonderful wonderful people out there but i'm talking about primarily the mainstream investor who believes somehow everything's going to fall into their lap I just pray it's not their head. Man, I'll tell you what, Steve. Uh, we've we've actually knocked off another uh, three hours to, tonight. I, I cannot believe how fast this time has gone. Uh, by the way, Joe, you're going to have to take over the studio because mine just went black. Um, it, and, and it happens. And, and folks, when, uh, when Steve talks about him and Hawk being knocked off the air, uh, we're just getting a taste of it here, okay? And so, so listen, uh, he's not making this stuff up. We've been up. knocked off several times tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've gotten lots of information, uh, but, definitely. But, but Stephen, in, in a minute and a half, we've got in closing. I think we, uh, in a minute, we've got in closing. What is the most important thing you can you can tell our listeners in, in the last minute here? It's the same thing I've told them twenty years. The questions in life that they need answers for can only be answered by Jesus. The deliverance that they're going to need, I'm going to need, we're going to need, is going to be by supernatural intervention in our lives by the hand of the living God. It's going to be imperative that we have the spirit of discernment. Discernment isn't suspicion. Discernment is a gift of the Holy Ghost in which the Spirit of God shows you the the uh, reality of what's being said, because there are going to be more Judas goats in the entire goat population of the world. Get set for betrayal. Make sure that anyone you trust, ask the Lord, Lord, is this someone that I can trust, that you want me to trust? If you don't get an answer, I would say I wouldn't move on it until you do. Learn to thank the Lord for everything that's in your life, because a grateful heart is a heart that's susceptible to revelation. A jealous and envious heart is one that will be void of revelation until the basis of the jealousy and envy is dealt with. I told you, Doug, one of the ladies who really sought God because she heard all this shared me on your show and other shows she went to the lord because she was troubled and couldn't believe at the uh, attack she she read all the boards you know all the different boards against me and stuff and she said steve you know what the lord told me she said and she said it was interesting to her the majority was coming from people who claimed to be christians but she said the lord showed her that it was jealousy and envy and i, I don't know what anyone be, would be jealous of and she said, they even challenge you seeing Jesus. Well, I said, well, then they would have really been offended if they saw me before I saw Jesus, because I would have uh, been not so nice in those days. But the point is, is that it's about keeping our eyes on him. Everything you hear, including everything I've said to you tonight, take it to the Lord in prayer. But don't dismiss stuff because you just don't think it's true until you've done your homework. And I can tell you point blank, Doug, after 40 years of doing homework, I have passed the the test, not all the tests. I'm just looking to pass the ultimate test, which is being faithful to Jesus unto the end and to overcoming, because I am absolutely convinced that there is no purpose now from this point on in our lives except to touch as many lives to help as many people as possible. Someone said, oh, what are you trying to be a do-gooder? Uh-uh. I said, no, I've been a do-batter all my life. I'm just trying to be a do-better. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, and uh, so uh, you know, you've touched my soul tonight, and uh, uh, we've had such a great response from the people who have listened tonight to this show. They understand the urgency. Finally, I think they've under understand the urgency, and I just want to say thank you and uh, and, pra and praise God for you. Well, Doug and, and, and Joe, God bless you guys. My prayer is that the Lord multiplies, keeps you safe, and just gives you favor with people you know and don't know. And ladies and gentlemen, please support Doug's show. I know the toll it takes financially when you get hit with the bills. Those of you that have supported me in the past, take that support because I'm not on anymore. Support Hawk. 
support the guys that are laying your lives down. You know, the only two guys I listen to right now, by the way, is I listen to Doug and I listen to Hawk. Hawk is the guy that's nailing it, and Hawk is the guy that's getting the most flack. When I saw Doug getting flack, I said, well, welcome to the Brotherhood of Flack, Doug. <laughs> you don't get flack until you're, uh, unless you're over target. Remember when I said that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I'll tell you what, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand how you could have lasted as long as you did. Uh, we've reached the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Uh, Steve, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on. Uh, your message is heard loud and clear. Uh, we need to seek the Lord, and we need to seek Jesus, and, and he needs to be the decision maker in our life, and uh, and how important preparation is. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. We have received You're welcome, you guys, and we, brought, we all just thank the Lord. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hold on a minute.